You're the next one in line for the kill You don't believe me, but I'm betting that you will Step up, I'll let you live a little bit With the pain that I bring You know it's only the beginning Step up, cause you're the next one in line for the kill You don't believe me, but I'm betting that you will Step up, I'll let you live a little bit With the pain that I bring You know it's only the beginning I'm breaking the limit inside you Stop begging someone to hide you I'm breaking the limit inside you Stop begging someone to hide you you. I'm breaking the limit inside you. Stop begging someone to hide you. I'm breaking the limit inside you. Don't run away. Bring it on straight to me. Let's kick some ass. And there we go. That's George Gatton with uh, well, my my man Draymond. <laughs> That's the, the Stone Cold Steve Austin disturbed version. Very cool. Which I. Yeah, we're not big disturbed people over here, but I, yeah, I speak for yourself. I, lo- I love, I love the Stone Cold Disturbed version. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, Welcome to Kicking Ass with Jesse and Andy. Brought to you by American Barbell Club. There it is, abcstrong.com. Look better, feel better. You guys are working out. Get their shit, man. It's good shit. Yeah. Uh, today we have. Yeah. <laughs> we got. So we got, th- this like the thing is, we have a jerk off of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> We have a jack off of all three. Yeah, that's. A, I was. I was gonna say the. I wasn't gonna call him a jack off. But yeah, a brother well, of all three. Yeah, 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 an yeah. ongoing. An ongoing he's, theme he's, is us tugging. So, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, a jack off of all three. The voice. The voice of ESW, stand-up comedian, Chris Gullo. Gullo. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Claims. Yeah. Claims adjuster. Uh, yeah. Grave digger, <laughs> grave digger. Uh, Just gonna keep adding things um, to yeah. it. Seashell going. collector, yeah. seashell collector. Yeah. Ref- referee, also good yeah. brother. Referee. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gullo, thanks for coming in, man. No yeah. problem. Thank you. And I didn't know there was that many lyrics to that Stone Cold Disturbed song. Yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, this is going in deep. It's gonna start talking about Stone Cold's like divorces. And stuff. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I kind of liked it because it was like, like we talked about this the other day, like. You know when a, when someone like remixes a song, like it sounded like a different song. I was I was wondering how that sure. was I, when you told me what it was. I was like, I wonder how this is gonna sound. Well, the thing is, is like, I I kind of like like the old WWF theme songs were great because you could put your own lyrics to them. Like when it was just there yeah, was those no were, lyrics. Those were like very disturbed lyrics. Because <laughs> and then Draymond's like, no. Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> yes. Listen, man. Step up. Listen, you figure <laughs> you figure the notes out. You figure the drums out if you guys can. <laughs> like it was super hard. The Stone Cold yeah. original theme song was very hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'll just write some lyrics to it, and then it's just like, where did you go with that? <laughs> Talking about like limits. There's and, like a zero about like kind of not being about a badass at all. It's like a guy that's just he's a stand up guy. <laughs> I saw that somebody actually wanted them at the next uh, E E TID uh, Christmas show. They actually Disturbed? wanted to serve yes. Oh, one person commented. It, 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 I talk about Draymond a lot. Oh time. yeah. So like if they pay. do, they have to sing that. Austin oh, Stone Cold I, wonder, I wonder if they do play it live. No, I never. Lo- no, there's no fucking. You don't think so? No. Uh, I did see a hardcore band cover the Triple H song once. That's pretty And a pit broke. Like a huge <laughs> pit broke out. It was sick. In yes. St. Catharines at some place with like, I remember it was like, it was seriously called like, like Hawaiian Charlie's or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, and like yeah. this band went into, it was like, I think they even said like, like the singer even said they had like, to have, yeah had some kind like of like the tagline like uh-huh. the, like the Triple H tag tagline like time to play the game yeah time <laughs> yeah. to play the game and then they went they into it and just like that, and the place went ape shit <laughs> rules very cool my like uh, I'm terrible with like WrestleMania numbers but it's that it's a sixty nine it's the <laughs> number sixty nine when Austin worked Rock and he turned heel at the end uh, it's in like it's in Houston Texas. But he, he comes out, it's like, it, you know, almost his hometown, like his home state of Texas. Austin comes out to the Disturbed version. It's fucking awesome. Like, that place explodes. Did Disturbed play it? No. Oh, it just man. comes out, but it fucking rules. I couldn't imagine Draymond's movements. <laughs> yeah, fucking. <laughs> a, I talked about it before. I loved, like, when Motorhead played Triple H's music. Oh, yeah. And, like, Triple H came up from the stage, and he just, like, they were just such, like, like, you know, 
decrepit, drugged out rock guys, and he just looked like a superhuman when he came up from the yeah. stage. It was like, well, I can't believe that's like a human being compared to those human beings. Yeah. Like, yeah. how's that possible? It's like the Chuck E. Cheese band playing. Yeah, like, uh, yeah exactly. Dude, I'm like, I used to get it real so like gassed up. I used to get so gassed up for that band. <laughs> I remember, like, my mom and dad would, like, take me to Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid, and I used to just sit and watch the band. <laughs> But, like, after you were there for an hour, you kind of, like, heard the same songs, like, over and over again. Still awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's still- My favorite guitar player is that bear. <laughs> he was fucking sick. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Yeah, the band had some issues. He had a drug problem. I remember, like, I was so bummed, like, because uh, my favorite part of Chuck E. Cheese was always, like, jumping into the ball pit. And then, like, when he got older, finding out, like... I remember I brought it up. My sister was like, that's gross. Like, everybody pees in the balls. And I was like, what? And I was so I was so bummed out about that. I didn't know that was like a real thing. Kids just piss in those balls. <laughs> One of the first jokes I actually wrote for stand-up, and I still do it once in a while, is uh, it's talking about like naming uh, your kid after your favorite place to have sex. And I would say the Chug and Cheese ball pit, just for that, because I <laughs> yeah, knew yeah. people would know what would happen into the, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the Chug and Cheese ball we pit. We don't know where that went. <laughs> Jordan Buck, remember the bad storm when they had to bring, like, this is probably like 2000 the October storm. And this is a long time ago, like 2000, 2001. And it was whatever the same year that, uh, you know, I don't have, I don't know calendars. So I just go by wrestling events. Uh-huh. <laughs> the same year that, uh, Mick Foley went off the top of the cage. Gotcha. Oh, <laughs> whatever year that I was. I think that's 99. I'm still in high school. Yeah, really? That might 99. be 98. Right, right. I know like... every time I die was a band and I'm, I'm 40. So, um, it might've been 97. Yeah. Uh, sorry to rewind, but, uh, 98 was Michaels and Austin for the title. Yeah. And that yeah. was before that. Because Austin was feuding with Taker. I could be Well, no, because Bad, no, Bad Blood was 97, and that was or, that was the Hell in a Cell with Taker and Michaels. So I think that it was 98 with Taker. Okay. I think so. I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, either well, way, the band was together. At yeah. Time. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, at whatever year that was. And I remember, like, Jordan getting stuck in the snow. And, like, it was one of those things where, like, he was in traffic, and, like, they, they, they just were just like, you, yeah, you're, you're there. You can't you're, go any farther? Yeah. And he was right outside of a Chuck E. Cheese and got to spend the night <clears throat> in a Chuck E. Cheese, and he slept in the ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> True story. That's pretty good. Yeah. I hope he like, got some just, pizza. Like, eating pizza, yeah. They were just, like, eating pizza yeah, and, like, hanging pizza, out. Yeah. I know Video people games. that just go for the pizza. Like, really? still to this day, they're grown adults. Ever had and there, there's something about known? this pizza. Were they known for having good pizza? Oh, no. It's, like, terrible frozen pizza. Oh, but, you know, okay. people enjoy yeah, awful yeah, things. Shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Did you guys ever go to Skateland in Lockport? Yes. Okay, Skateland and Lockport had this, like, weird sauce. I still think about it every time I think about pizza. And it was, like, a frozen pizza. Yeah. And, it, like, the sauce tastes like there was, like, pumpkin in it. <laughs> like a pumpkin spice it's, in it. And I still way ahead of its time. It. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, like, yeah. That was, like, early on. Skateland was, like, the first place we used to go to where, like, you were old enough to, like, go hang out with, like, other kids and girls and, like, your parents would yeah. drop you off. It was a Skateland. Did you ever go to a lockdown? In a skate, like, oh a skate yeah, they place? like lock you in for the night. Oh yeah, man, what a weird gimmick. And it's, I wonder if that's a yeah. Buffalo thing. I did one at like a Christian center, so it wasn't as wild. That's but every, yeah, there's there's no a, fingering going. But on. that's what it's called, like is like a lock in, right? Yo, rainbow. Yeah, rainbow. it's it's a lock in. Yes, imagine roll rainbow. Now they that, that, do it, and there was fingering for sure. Game zone, like, game yeah, zone. yeah. Remember oh, game, dude, game zone. This is a true story. Remember, Game Zone used to have like those railings in like the the arcade section. Yeah. The one railing was exactly, and this is awesome because it was Attitude Era. <laughs> so I used to literally do like pot, like uh, springboards off of that fence into just people hanging out. <laughs> like I would jump up off and just jump into like, yeah. people just not paying attention into them. I remember Stone Cold stunning a dude in the laser tag thing. And him being mad because I got his sweatpants dirty. <laughs> um, I remember getting in an actual fight outside with um, this dude wearing cowboy boots. And he was, like, sneaking around in between the cars. So I just blasted him with a punch. And our, he put me in a headlock. And he kept going. <laughs> he kept going. Bro, are you done? Are you done, bro? <laughs> and I, I was just standing there, like, he had me in a headlock. I was like. 
you haven't even hit me yet. I, I mean, I blasted this dude like hard, and then two seconds later, I like body slammed him on the back of a car. And then two seconds later, after that, my friends had shoved his head into like the wheel well of a car, and we're just kicking the shit out of him. <laughs> Did you guys awesome. just beat him up for being a creepy guy with cowboy boots? No, it was like in the middle of like a thirty on thirty. Oh, okay. It was like North Tonawanda versus Sweet Home. Oh, <laughs> like that in cars. Those battles zone, right outside. Game zones in NNT. Yeah. Imagine, imagine being like. Like either like a teenager or like an adult who had to work one of those uh, like lock-ins, and basically all you're doing is like trying to prevent teenagers from banging each other the whole time. Yeah, night. or fighting. Yeah, like, yeah. Fighting, fighting and having and sex fighting. with each other. Like, it sounds like Yo, a horrible okay, game. Check this out. I want to bring this up right now while you guys are here. This is a, I came up with a fucking <laughs> awesome idea. Oh, it's the, like what one? No, keep going. What are you talking about? The awards. No, oh, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah, that's, that. that's, that's, I'm going to put the guy over, Greg, <laughs> this guy called Greg Bang, uh-huh. he came up with the idea for the Tuggy Awards, Yeah, <laughs> but we'll get into that in a second. I want to start holding adult high school dances. <laughs> it's a brilliant idea. Right? No, no, I mean, like, like, get a VFW hall, get a DJ, and then literally just have a high school dance for people that are in their 30s. Oh. And you could do like the beer and wine fundraiser things to get the one yes. day liquor license and if that's... please write in if you guys would like to go to a dance, an actual dance. I feel like married people would like love that. Yeah. You know I think I mean? anyone would love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah Everybody yeah, yeah. likes to relive when they were happy. Exactly. Yeah. To hear S Club 7 be the last song on the night again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, gra- but, gra- grab your special someone. Yeah. You we here never had a dream come true. Yeah. 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 You're definitely going to be the guy on the Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> people, what was the gimmick? They were the, the big bowl of punch. And then, like, I think in the 70s, they said, like, people used to, like, put acid in the punch oh, yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Big <and> just... time. <laughs> I got lucky to live. I lived actually right down the street from the Boys and Girls Club. Club, so oh, yeah. and they had dances every single month. Yeah, and you were allowed to start going when you were eleven. It was like it was like Jeez. winning the goddamn lottery. Like, yeah. I was like yes. Yeah, like I was so old excited going to dances. Oh yeah. yeah, and like trying to get all the like the fifteen year old girls to dance with you. Yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. Like, I was like, look at me, I'm cool. I dance with a fifteen year old. Do you guys remember? Like, Mind you, I was eleven at this time. People were saying I was eleven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember like the first your first like high school dance where like? Do you remember your first high school dance? Yeah, but I like I said, I did these community center dances before that. So yeah, that's different. Though. So I remember like Edwin McCain, I'll be being my first yeah, kiss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, cool. Your crying shoulder. Yeah. Like actual like, because yeah, we used to go to like Kiwanis Center dances, which yeah. was like a boys and girls club. But then you talk about going to the actual high school. Yeah, I do remember middle, it though. middle school. Like, I kind of, yeah, yeah, I kind of remember. Dude, we had a fucking, we had a karaoke one and it was awesome. Like we had an actual oh. karaoke. Oh, one. that's cool! Yeah, we With never like a had a jumbotron. That. Like, like they brought in like this whole system, a jumbotron thing. It was awesome. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Ken, Ken West never had anything cool like that. No, we yeah. didn't have nothing like that. That's badass. Yeah, it was so cool. Man. <laughs> Ken West was like, "Here's this DJ that's gonna play mostly Sean Paul." Have you a went good to time. Ken West? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, one of my like biggest like like life rivals went to uh, Ken West. This dude named Jeff Gruendike. <laughs> I don't know who Gruendike. he is. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget him. He does sound like he's a Gruendike. <laughs> him and I were like like neck and neck in the 400 and 800 like the entire time I was in high school and then we went to the same college or we saw, we met each other again when we were in college <laughs> race like running for like yeah. separate schools. I think he went to like University of Rochester or something like that and like I remember like like he finally like talked to me, like came up and talked to me. Never talked, and we were just always raced against each other. And then, yeah, we finally talked, and he was like, "Dude, we were always like terrified. You were like two hundred pounds, and like just as fast as us. It was like really scary." <laughs> <What's> <laughs> he was the, like uh, one hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, Vision Quest is that the old wrestling movie? Vision Quest, yeah, yeah, and they because they had the two rivals, yeah. And well, fuck, what was the what was the bad dude's name or like the foreign guy? I don't know. He had like one name, and this when this he had like a, he was like carrying a log like, yeah. up the steps. He had a sweet name. I can't remember what it was. Someone listening right now is losing it. Very probably cool. close to Gruendike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. Jeff Gruendike. I want to go. I, I don't want to skip over the comedy stuff because yeah, I, we, oh, no, you're like, good. we need to like, actually not yeah. skip over our like. <laughs> I just like talking about weird shit. Not just have him chime in. Yeah, we're just kind of like shitting on you. No, no, no. Let's talk about this thing. This idea that I have. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a big stand-up comedy mark. So, like, how long ago did you, like, pursue comedy? Oh, it's uh, it was 2008. Like, I was still in college, and I used a fake ID, because I wasn't 21 at the time, to actually go to open mics. You had to be 21? Yeah, well, yeah, it was, it was, a, ni- it was a Nietzsche's. And, yeah. uh, you know, sorry, Nietzsche's. Uh, yeah, yeah. comes out now. <laughs> when you started doing it, they have, like, a really old, weird 
uh, door guy. No, it looked like a gypsy. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Well, remember that yeah, no, this guy was like, a, it, well, here's the thing. That's how, the, how I kind of got the guy to be my friend. He was like in a band, and I happened to like work at WBNY doing the college radio, and I had a show that had the, the local show, it had local bands yeah, play. And, plays, uh, and I told, hey, man, come your band come on the radio, and then I never got ID'd ever again. Yeah. <laughs> just, just brothered yourself right in. So, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> super smart. Played his music every Thursday night, and we were good to go. <laughs> yeah, that's all it took. Um, well, like my, like, because I, I always used to talk about this, was like, Buffalo, until now, there's a helium in Buffalo downtown, but there was, like, never a comedy club in Buffalo. Like, oh, yeah. They tried, there was the one in North Tonawanda. There was a long- Yuck Yucks that was in the Boulevard Mall. Really? Yeah. I don't even remember that. And what was it? Like Who was Chit Chat or something like the, that? Uh, Wits, Wits End was, like... Well, Wits End was downtown. Wits End was downtown. I don't even think that lasted a year. There was the... It was the maybe the funny the, bone, the, but there was one in like Colvin area. Yeah, right. yeah, because that was, was that's where like Puma and all the ESW guys yeah, used to, where, where they used to the, go. The, yeah, the BAC women's BAC was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, now it's like it's Exit Two Bar and Grill. Yeah, <laughs> it was like I remember I was thinking I'm like, how did that place close? It was the only it's the only comedy club in Buffalo. Like, how do you fuck that up? Um, I think a lot of it had to do with like there not being really a lot of local guys at the time. Yeah, I mean there I was, but it was the same guys that were there since the '80s. Had that too. Yeah, um, because it was comedians. You know, doing it with really no financial baker. Yeah. Where Helium is a corporate exactly. chain. Yes. That, you know, and, you know, they have more financial money. But I got into comedy kind of like the worst time ever in Buffalo. Because <laughs> gotcha. there literally was just Nietzsche's. All the clubs just closed. Like yeah. literally like 06, 07. And Nietzsche's, like, for all the clubs people just listening, Nietzsche's is just a bar on Allen Street. Yeah. But they yeah. do open mics. And Around still, ever. I yeah. mean, and that 10 years for me, but even before that, like Kristen Becker started it up there yeah. and they were going on for a long time. But yeah, it was literally Nietzsche's. And then once in a while, you might get on a show at like a weird, at like a weird sports bar. Or yeah, something I, like I remember that. like, I would always, um, who's the dude from The Edge? Or no, 97 Rock. Rob Lederman. Yeah. yeah. Which he was part of one of those clubs. I think the one that was at like Colvin. Yeah. I remember seeing And now like he does host. the Rob's comedy playoffs. Yeah, he'd yeah. always like host things like at little places once in a while. But Yeah, like, he'll get like fire halls. He still does like go to fire halls and stuff like that. So he yeah. kind of got like a dance vibe. Like, yeah, well, yeah, we go to the fire halls, create a dance, but he does it with stand up. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of money to be made in like fire halls and yeah. like benefits and stuff like yeah. stuff well, like, like that. Like, I feel like. This is going to go down like a long road, but like 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 Doctor Dirty, it's, yes. I mean the John Valdi, like the living that guy makes, just doing like, well comedy gigs in Buffalo is nuts. He he is because he's like he actually caters to like the dirty bar owner. Yeah, he's like oh I gotta have Doctor Dirty in here. I mean this guy, but he this plays guy, Sunset Beach, Sunset Bay yeah. every year, and older people know who he is too. So he's yeah. he's, he's, he's he been, can he's, pay higher price. Gigs. How long has he how long has he been around for? Um, he was around way before when I was doing I think it. He's from like the eighties. Yeah, the yeah 80s. I would even say probably before that. Yeah, like he, remember, like, he did a strip club recently. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, like, I remember like when I was a kid, kid. I remember hearing like the greasy, grimy gopher guts like piano thing that he would do, which is like his that he had that song. He did that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like and I remember hearing that when I was like a kid in the eighties. My like my dad told me that he like he went out to Vegas for a bit. And then, like, but I ended up coming back to Buffalo. And then he has, like, that sweet house. You ever go to his maze? Dude, it's no. awesome. Yeah. With, like, there's, like, Disney character things of, in it. A lot of my friends have... A lot of fingers. Yeah, fingered a lot of girls in that maze. <laughs> there's a lot of fingers. Great, like, John Valdi is, like, a, a legendary comedian in Buffalo. And he had... He's got a big house, and he has, like, a legit maze, like, yeah. from a movie, like, with big bushes, like, yeah. fucking The Shining or something. And a maze in his backyard, and he, like, he just, I don't even know if it's still around, but you used to be able to just go there. Yeah. We, They'd uh, turn the lights on for you, and you could just hang out in this I maze. remember, like, going through there, and, like, he'd be walk, just walking around with us. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've never, I've never we, been We always went at night, so. He would, yeah, he, like, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, at night, sometimes. I wonder if we were ever at the maze together. And he is <laughs> kind of scary cool. looking to begin yeah, with. Yeah, but so. he would, like, yeah. you come up, and you'd be, I remember, like, looking at, like, a Beauty and the Beast, like, post or something like that because he's always had these weird like pictures yeah. like like Disney pictures looking at it he walked up and he was like oh it's a great movie and just like <laughs> we're just like hey man thanks for like it's an Oscar winner oh, thanks, thanks, thanks for letting us hang out yeah. in your backyard <laughs> hey first 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 auto ticket I ever got was out there oh really like, parked outside of his maze for real <laughs> I was like yeah 17 that sucks like that. Yeah. he uh but uh well sorry I got off the track there but so you were saying you got in at like a shitty time yeah it was very shitty like now it's cool because now there's like a club and there's so many comics because so now there's open mics almost every single night yeah there's 
at least there's independent like underground shows at least happening uh, once a week, if not two to three times a week. That's sweet. like like just regular paid gigs and not like, not to segue, but I, I have a, I have a little thing on here where I always like to say that we live in incredible times, and I feel like that's a perfect example. Yeah. Let's talk about all, like you know like wrestling is at such a boom right now, and like comedy, and it's just like I don't know. I feel like it's because there's just so much content going on. It's like it's cool to hear that that like you said like even like smaller comedy shows in Buffalo there's just so much more now than there was before well yeah and it's fucking awesome the, like the thing is now venues are taking a risk on comedy yeah which I never understood why venues wouldn't because yeah. it's the lowest low cost entertainment yeah, you you'll ever a, have a guy talking into a microphone you, you, you maybe need to have PA guy but yeah, yeah that's like you need a microphone this and that but Buffalo loves cover bands yeah and like when I got in in 08 like trying to get to convince these bars to do shows was like pulling teeth because yeah. to them they're like nah you know we're not gonna give you a Friday Saturday we'll give you a two Tuesday. Yeah. Well, yeah, doing a Tuesday luck, night comedy show and charging five to ten bucks at the door is not going to work out. Yeah, like, yeah. and a lot of places would not give up their weekends. No, man, we got this. You know, uh, you know, Gin Blossoms cover band coming in, yeah. and <laughs> they fill the place. And, yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, and yeah. this and that, or or you know, we got a c- crazy cowboy dude doing his karaoke, like <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know, really, that creepy guy from the Garden Park. You know, really nails it. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Like so. Like, like, isn't, there, isn't there a thing called like papering the room where it's basically just all like free tickets or like people there? That will happen at the club level. But when you're running an independent show and I ran a lot of them, yeah. you can't do that because that's going to be the money you're going to pay yeah, the comics. Because yeah. a lot of bars, some bars will do bought shows. So you'll find them on like, I'm in this uh, thing called Gig Salad uh-huh. and you'll get like, like there'll be a random like bar or like an East Auto that says, hey, we want to bring you in want to give you this amount of money, bring a couple comics. That's cool. But a yeah. lot of times, like if you want to run a show in Buffalo or even like the surrounding suburbs, you have to, you basically have to make a deal with them. You get the door and then they get the bar. Yeah, that's, gotcha. that's what it is. Gotcha, like there's gotcha, a, gotcha. maybe there's a percentage of the door depending, but it's, you get the door, they get the bar. So you paper it. It's great for them, but it's terrible for you and yeah. the other comics. Yeah, How do you yeah. convince these comics to do it for nothing? You know, and none of us have money. So it's just like, you know what I mean? So yeah. you're hoping on that. That's that, what you're banking on. You're banking on enough people being at the door, you know? Yeah. But I was always one of those guys that I always paid everybody. Cause I know some comics would be like, Oh, well, you're new. You only been in it for about four months, so your first time you'll get free. Like I'm, I'm always into those. I always like to give people their first shot, like at a, like a paid five minute set. And uh, you know, I, I, I yeah. never somebody never, always never walked z- out with never money. zero dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, uh, Roger Ruffin runs a promotion in Cincinnati. Roger. Uh, refereed Bret Hart versus Roddy Piper at WrestleMania. Oh, that's trained, awesome. like Trained Abyss, Wildcat Chris yeah. Harris, uh, Carl Anderson. And he's the same thing. He Wildcat was just like... Chris Harris. <laughs> exactly. He, he, always says, he says the same thing. He was like... He's like, I don't... I, like, I don't care what I draw. Everybody that works the show is right. getting something. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Nobody's ever not getting anything. Yeah. Like, we would do shows that had like seven people in there. But like, I yeah. sit yeah. all the comics down and go, listen, we're all going to walk away with something. You yeah. Know? Which I always like... Hope this doesn't come off the wrong way, but it's like, I always thought of that. It's like, you know, when you're doing stand-up comedy in front of, like, seven people, it's like, wrestling sucks in front of, like, seven people, because it's like, you, you like you know, you can work around it, but you you, you still have to take bumps, and, like, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, it's still physical. It's just like, you know, at least stand-up comedy, you're not fucking killing yourself. <laughs> well, there's nothing to distract the people, so they're literally completely focused on you. That's the only thing. We're like, we're wrestling, like, there's a match, but then you can look at the ref, you can look at the lights. Oh, yeah. Look at the re- like, literally comedy, they're just staring at you. Yes. So yeah. if you do you, terrible, or it's yeah. just really awkward, and, yeah. like, my, I, I, my favorite, like, and I think guys can kick at this. My favorite, like, awful stand-up show I ever did was, so I was, like, so I talked about 2008 was not a good time, so I think this was 09. <laughs> this was 09. You just like, started to kick out? You yeah. would just do comedy at whatever told, let you do comedy at, and there was this girl, I think her name was, like, Bernice Marie. She was, like, an acoustic singer in Buffalo or yeah. whatever, and she was booking the the yard and what the yard was is that abandoned boat yard on yeah. the west side of the yeah. Grand Street and she wanted to do like a all day festival thing and she knew I did comedy she's like oh come and do some comedy yeah. so okay there's like all these bands and I was on right after this guy named I was the Scarecrow <laughs> very cool wait yeah. was he doing comedy no oh okay. he was a singer okay and he literally like I I'm getting ready and he comes on and he does this song he did like one song and it was he would just go I wish I was a mouse in the mall Marble house. <laughs> I saw her look in the marble house. Yeah. Like, he would just monotone talk and then just scream, scream marble house. And I'm thinking, and no one's reacting to this. I'm like, this yeah. is going to be great. I'm a comic. I'm going to go up and make fun of the marble house guy. Yeah, yeah. So 
I go up there and I'm like, oh, how about that guy? We're not doing that. comedy here in a Marvel house. And I love where this is Make going. all these jokes. And they looked at me like I was like, Spreading Nazism. And, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> like, 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 why are you making fun of this poor guy? Yeah, why, why, <laughs> like, and like, these people were coming up to me like, he was very talented, and you were like bad mouthing him and this and that. And I'm like, yeah. you guys didn't even react to his. Who goes to a concert and makes no yeah. noise? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you guys were with me on this one. <laughs> it, it, it just is, and like, it, it, you got, there was probably like 20 people, and this boatyard was like as big as Ralph Wilson Stadium, and you're bombing, and you're just yeah. like, and you see the throughway, and you just want to just run into the throughway. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's to, to take back what I said before was like, I can handle bombing and wrestling. Like now, like, you know, if I had to wrestle in front of 10 people, like, I know how to handle it. It really doesn't phase me. Like, bombing and comedy sounds like that's one of those where, like, 20 seconds has to feel like 20 minutes. Like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> like, try yeah, bombing. it's... Try bombing when you have an hour set. Yeah, that was oh, like, yeah. always thought of that, too, especially there, when you're, like, like, a heavy band. You're a headliner. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're just playing in front of, like... You're playing a place that holds 1,200, and, like, somehow there's only, like, 100 people there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, they are just not into you, and they are in some foreign country. <laughs> I, uh... We toured with Terror. Yeah. In, like, like, it was, like, Terror and Down for Nothing. It was, like, straight hardcore bands. Like, us, Acacia Strain, and, like, um... Uh, I can't remember. All Shall Perish was, like, the tour. And, like... Every band got a good reaction, and then every time I would go on, and it was just like, huh, here we go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Guar tours. You'd be like, you know, on a tour of the Guar, where it's yeah. like, everybody's there to see Guar. Yeah. And you're just kind of trying to get over, and people are spitting on you, and <sighs> like, yeah. Because you said Slayer is the other one, right? You say the Slayer, yeah, Slayer, the Slayer spot's a rough it, one. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. It literally doesn't matter who you are. If you open for Slayer, the, people the, are there to see Slayer. The first time I heard about that was, I remember, uh, the Deftones were opening for Kiss. And yeah. Like, I thought that was awesome. I didn't yeah. go to the show, but, like, they said, like, yeah, Deftones were getting booed off the stage, like, every night. Yeah. Because they just wanted to Kiss. Yeah. There was, like, a, a cool story about that that SARS festival, like, that was in Toronto. Oh, yeah, yeah. With Justin Timberlake, where Justin Timberlake got up, played for eight minutes, and then left because so many people were throwing shit at him. Oh. And then the Stones had him come out and do a song, and, like, people started throwing stuff, and then Keith Richards just stepped in front of him and, like, just... Remember, remember that movie Hero with with Jet Li? Yes. There's that scene where like all the arrows are coming at him and yeah. they just like drop out of the sky. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like my mom and dad said it was like that. They went to the show where like Justin Timberlake came, people are throwing stuff, and then he just like stepped. Keith Richards stepped right in front of him, and then just it just it just all fell on the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, now, Gola, what about now? When did you start with wrestling? That would be 2000, well, late 2010, 2011. Like, but you're like a lifelong wrestling fan. Yeah. See, well, yeah. I, I, in 2005, like, I, like, I was at WBY and they had a show called Money They Mayhem and it literally yeah. ended on air right when I came in as a freshman. Who was so, the guy? Big Mosh and those guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they literally ended like the semester before I got into yeah. like Buff State. So I was like, I'm bringing fuck, I'm bringing wrestling radio back. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And uh, started Turnbuckle Talk. And uh, yeah. that's kind of how I like, met a lot of the guys and, yeah. and like that. Uh, you know, just like went to a couple indie shows, interviewed a bunch of guys. Like we had a point where we were interviewing like a Ring of Honor guy like every week, every Sweet. Monday. Like and it was pretty cool and like after that I was like I was like I really want to like do something in wrestling and I, and I, I never like I wasn't delusional I knew I couldn't be a wrestler and everything yeah, but yeah. I'm like you know I wanted to really be an announcer like a manager but like when I got in I was doing ring crew and they're like you'll be a great referee yeah you know I kind of I kind of blame Bill Collier for it a little bit yeah <laughs> like, yeah, like he thought I looked like Dennis Stamp so he made Warpath <laughs> book me in refing the show yeah, <laughs> like, like Dennis Stamp and, I mean I, I you know hey he th thought I did good but yeah he's like kid are you booked i'm like no nah, i'm just doing ring career he goes you got a ref shirt and i did buy one just in case but yeah, i never yeah, ref, hey. never ref a match in my life and Smart bill's guy. like he's like he goes back and goes yeah you're booked <laughs> awesome <laughs> did uh um so you started refing before you started ring announcing yes i started refing well i mean did they did you eventually grow into like ring announcing from like doing stand-up is well, that how that came about i yeah, well, I mean, I felt like the best position for me would either have been a ring announcer or a manager, yeah. just from the stand-up. Plus, I also, I, and I still to this day, I'll do, like, freelance, like, play-by-play -play for hockey and yeah. public address for basketball and, and stuff like that, like, football and all that stuff. So, I, I, you know, I felt like that was, like, 
you know, my transition. Would yeah. really, I feel like if I want to be in wrestling, an announcer would probably be. Did you go to school for telecommunications? I, I yeah, I went to school of media production. Yeah, ah, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's why you know, I, and like I hosted like a million different types of radio shows. Yeah. Just you know, Sean Angry Hero was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I love Sean. Yeah, that was like my. He used to have me. He did comedy for a little bit. I, really? I, I had him come do a comedy that's sometimes. Awesome. Yeah. And now what is he doing? He's doing a podcast. Yeah, he works for Podcast One, and yeah. he gets to just basically nerd out and just, yeah. yeah, so that's cool. That's badass. Yeah. We uh um I really not to blow off Gullo, but I do want to talk about these tug awards. The tug <laughs> yeah. We have uh well, I'm here. but I wanna I also I wanna ask Gullo about like tug time too. Well yeah, I wanna talk to him about wrestling. Because you <laughs> it's, yes. uh, like let's just get right into wrestling. Okay. Let's get it out of the way. So like my favorite guests, like Greg, obviously like Gregory Iron, yeah, uh like a hacker, like Scotty O'Shea. I love the dudes who like every form of wrestling like it's not it's not like yes. they can they can go oh man Akata and Omega was awesome but they can also go like oh shit like this fucking you know brood match from two <laughs> yeah. is like the greatest thing in the world you know what I mean <laughs> Yeah. Some matches stick out to you. Like, yeah, of course. I, I was telling this somebody the other day. There's a shotgun Saturday night match. And after they, like, stopped doing the nightclubs, yeah. which they should have never stopped. No. But it was when I they were. They should have done that yeah. with 205 Live. That's, that should have. Yeah. 205 that Live. That would have been cool. Should have just been an indie. In a, a, a WWE indie. In a different yeah. environment would 100% would be kick amazing. ass. amazing. It yeah. would be fucking awesome. They're trying to actually the live shows this past weekend. Yeah, I, wonder, yeah. Yeah. I haven't looked. I, wonder, I hope those live shows went good. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, so. What the hell we were talking about? Just like matches. Oh, like yeah. So no, there's a match oh, that's oh, stuck yeah. in my head. It, it, yeah, it was like pre-Raw. Like yeah, well, it's yeah, it's Saturday pre-Raw night. when they taped or whatever. Yeah. And it's it's Al Snow uh-huh. defending his hardcore title versus the Brooklyn Brawler, and it yeah. was the most offense I've ever seen the Brooklyn Brawler get yeah, in. That's great. And it just sticks with me. They use not one, not two, but three fire extinguishers <laughs> <laughs> in the match, and they just. I don't know why. Yeah. Just, I remember where I was. Yeah, if you remember I'll the iconic remember. moments, like I'll never remember. Yeah. Like this is the best hardcore match I've ever seen. I think they got like seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like but off ca- off camera, off mic, we were like talking about Dungeon of Doom. Like, oh, yeah, it's like it's still getting talked about to this day. Dungeon of Doom gets brought up all the time in 2000 you know 17 yeah, someone, now 2018 someone just tweeted us a picture and said like thank you for reminding me about this yeah, <laughs> yeah. and like and it's fantastic and everybody goes oh it was terrible but that i f- almost feel like like dungeon of doom was almost like ultimate warrior versus hulk hogan like the passing of a torch where it was like hey here's the corny shit we're gonna get rid of it, and now it's we're going to this like we're going to NWO. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like we're, we're gonna just beat the hell out of it. Yeah. As it ends here. But like when you go back and watch it, like it's like watching a comic book like come out because there was oh, like yeah. they were just characters. There was no wrestling. It was just characters. I didn't. I didn't watch WCW at that time. And like someone, the first one I heard about was White Castle of Fear. Yeah. With uh, Vader and Sting, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. And then like that, I just and then someone was like, yeah, this like whole era of WCW, and I started watching that. It was like Bulldog and Sid and Vader like on a beach, like all. Like, and and, all that, the and that one guy was in every like the little guy was in. It was, yeah, I yeah. was in like it's, everything. It's fucking awesome! It's so. Fun Why to Sting go back wasn't and going watch. after him because he caused every little event. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sting should be like, I want the midgets. The white. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The White Castle of Fear is like the coolest fucking thing. Like Sting flies into these mountains on a helicopter. You hear like Vader like laughing in the background, yeah. and like Harley races his man. It's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, like, but it's I mean, like a movie. If that's a, yeah, they're evil saying. villains. You yeah, know? that's like it. Honestly, was like, how do you combat the cheesiness of the WWF at that time? Where like they have one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, Ricky Steamboat. Dressing like a dragon, <laughs> the fire. and yeah. having his kid come out dressed like a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, what the fuck is going on? And like, hey, yeah. here we go. Let's give him a let's give him a gimmick animal. 
He'll come out with a Komodo dragon. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. that. A raptor, or a, not a raptor, a monitor. It was one of those monitor lizards, yeah. yeah. I think it's crazy. What are you thinking with that? Like, yeah. actually bringing a tiny dinosaur out there. At least WCW well, just went all the way with it. Yeah. Well, I, I love B, terrible B, like, monster movies. Me too. So, I, I, you know, like, I, like, I love, like, the stuff that sci-fi just puts out yeah. now. Like, like Aztec Rex and, you know, yeah. Killer Octopus versus, t- you know, Shark to Dactyl. Yeah. And it's so almost like they have- I love, like, the B-movie wrestling, yeah. where, you know? Yeah. It's almost like they have like two wheels, and there's two animals on, you know, there's animals on each wheel. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. First one, dog. Well, next one, pterodactyl. <laughs> Dogdactyl. There it is. Yeah. Let's make the movie. I, I still want my llama slide movie. Like every time they're like, "What should it be a movie like Sharknado?" I'm telling people, llama slide. <laughs> like you have these killer llamas that just come down a hill and they're just like attacking people. Yeah. Like I think it would be fantastic. Zama, oh no, the llama slides come. Zom Beavers on Netflix was really good. Yeah. Um, and I've I've watched plenty of Netflix movies where like I, it's like it's like if it's a monster movie, like I'm sold. Yeah. And a lot of them I've turned on. And I'll just fast forward to the end just because I, I, I just want to. I just want to see what the monster yeah. looks like. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. my wife hates them. She's like, "Oh, you're watching a giant shark movie. I'm out of here." Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm a giant shark movie. It's, it's There's a, a lot of them. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, break. like. I don't know what, like, I do appreciate, like, you know, Steamboat and Savage and stuff. I love that stuff. I mean, that's great to watch. But I don't know. I just, characters always stuck with me, like, crazy, yeah. goofy. Like, I was, you know, I was telling Jesse uh, before he got here, like, uh, about Brian Christopher, but, like, USWA, like, when I was a kid, like, we didn't really have cable until, like, yeah. 97 when it really got. So, like, 95, 96, my wrestling experience was what I can get on the antenna on Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. So I got superstars, you know, I got superstars, go. and I got, like, WCW Pro that was some. Yeah, very the, cool. That was you know, like my favorite show. Th- that was early in the morning, but then my evening and night was like USWA yeah. and Smoky Mountain towards the end, yeah. and then whatever ECW had in syndication. But like, yeah. S- Memphis Wrestling was my prime time wrestling. Sure. And awesome. Memphis Wrestling in like 95, not like 84. <laughs> yeah. when they were like, you know. <laughs> so, like, you know, I, I'm watching. Like, that's, I, I, it was like, I remember being on tour at that time, and I remember like, when you're on tour, you get it's cool because you get like local public access and you get whatever is local, you know, wrestling. You know, if once you get to the hotel, yeah. turn on, it's usually late at night. And like, I remember seeing like Mankind debut in USWA before, or was it Smoky Mountain? It was probably Smoky, Smoky Mountain. Mountain. It was definitely like a, a studio set. Yeah. And it was like, awesome i was like holy shit like cactus jack's out there like in this weird character and then the next night he was on yeah monday night raw yeah. and it was so fucking cool that's where they, they they would send like undertaker to like smoky mountain to work with like glenn jacobs yeah like, they knew they were gonna do a program in wwf yeah which is really cool so cool man and that was like it's funny that you say that because like i got when i was a kid i mean i was probably a teenager but i remember seeing like bruiser bedlam doing one of like the old timer shows at the odd you know what i'm saying like, yeah like they would bring back like the missing link and like ilio de Paulo. they'd like hand out like an ilio de Paulo award the, the, and, yeah the night of just like legends yeah, yeah, and something yeah. like that yeah and i remember seeing bruiser bedlam and being like who the fuck is this dude <laughs> he's insanely big and then you know it turned out that he only lived like 40 minutes away and like was a like a crazy like drug filled biker like that you know like took someone hostage kidnapped them and now he's the guy that died in jail right died, yeah. yeah you know and oh, it was died like jail? cause sometimes yeah. I confuse him with Killer Kyle cause they, they, they yeah. you know but Killer Kyle is not a criminal yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have like just a gimmick I, like I remember like once the um, once the network started putting that stuff up like I'd go back and I'm like oh shit Bruiser Bedlam's like there this is where he came from. Yeah. Holy shit. And I would like watch the stuff. I'm like, man, he was terrible. He did. He did some shit, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> How about the des- the the destroyer has like a golf park now? Yeah, he, he's had it for a while. Actually. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's... like Murphy told me, like you can like go there and like if you're playing golf, he'll just like drive up on like a cart and just like fuck with you and mask? stuff. Yeah. I, I it literally wouldn't blow me. Yeah. Up. No, he's surprised. I've never seen him without his mask, and I've been on like a lot I don't think of like I... things he's done and. Yeah. Oh, was I? What, yeah, I did because I when I used to bartend at the airport, the one time he came in, fuck, and I like I normally wouldn't do this, but like I had just done a show literally like the night before, and so, and I just like he came in to like buy like an orange juice, and I was just like, oh hey man, and I like yeah. 
try, I like tried telling him I was just on a wrestling show, like with somebody he knew or something like that. And like, he totally just like basically he just tried to tell me that he had shirts on him if I wanted to buy a shirt. And I was just like, yeah, that's cool, man. Thanks. <laughs> good, good talk. Anyways, <laughs> do you remember your first wrestling moment? Like when you were a kid, uh, it, like it clicked. You were like, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> this is another like ridiculous moment. Once again, it's not one of those. Uh, it was probably 90, 95, I'd say, 95. Like, I watched wrestling before then, but, like, watch it. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. And this is when Jim Cornette brought out Shinobi the Ninja to take on Shawn Michaels on Superstars. <laughs> and I remember, like, Shinobi this is freaking Ninja. cool. Shinobi yeah. versus Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and, I'm like, yeah. I, and I was like, you know what? I, I liked it then. I'm like, I love wrestling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's it's all, it's watching all, a yeah. ninja, you know, wrestle Shawn Michaels. Like, yeah. this is, this, this, I officially love wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> was it, didn't they? No, wasn't that Bret Hart versus all the Knights? And survive, and yeah, there series. were supposed to be something with like Jerry Lawler, but Lawler had something happen where he couldn't wrestle, so it was then Shawn Michaels and the Knights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. just a bunch of which knights. made no sense that Shawn Michaels had come out like random, du- to me. random dudes. In yes, the heartbreak coming on. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, we can get to something else now. We just want to talk wrestling for a yeah. second. Oh no, I, we, we can talk we'll, anything. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get back to it 100. Yeah, like wrestling to me is like. It's funny because you and I, when we talk about wrestling, it's always never anything good. Yeah, WWE yeah, Saturday yeah. man. Yeah, and that's where we talk about the cable. Like, like I would go visit my dad on the weekends, yeah. and he had cable. Yeah, and like the only weekend show was WCW Saturday Dude. Night, really. <laughs> like, and uh, six oh five, man, and like six oh five means yeah. stuff to other people. Like, the, yeah. like Ole Anderson. Six oh five to means like I'm gonna see Mike Enos, and I'm gonna yeah, see yeah. the Gambler, <laughs> and I'm gonna see Horseshoe, yeah. and I'm gonna see like. <laughs> like it's funny, like. M- one of my all-time favorite tag teams is Fire and Ice. And it's only because... My of dream night. is to manage Fire and Ice. Dude, I want a promoter to have... I and mean, I know Norton's great. taking bookies. I don't know why Strain is. Yeah. Me and, I want to manage... Me and Dick, but, me and Dick Fire talked Ice. about doing a new version of Fire and Ice. <laughs> that would be yeah. fantastic. Me and Dick Justice is Fire and Ice. <laughs> you just need like, a weird guy to be Teddy Long. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. How <laughs> weird is it that... that like? How cool would it be if Balls Mahoney was still around and Dick and Dick and Balls Mahoney be a tag team as Dick and oh, Balls? Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh my shit God. writes itself. <laughs> it was, well, at at the last ESW show, like Colin and all those dudes, like all the Rochester guys, were like freaking out over Chuck and Billy and saying like how underrated Chuck and Billy as a tag team were. Oh well, yeah. And now I want to like go back and watch all the Chuck and Billy stuff. Well, people don't like people don't think about the gimmick. I always thought that gimmick. like I heard Billy Gunn like. Hated the whole thing. So the I, wrestling I always kind of was great. Yeah. Okay, so but I, he's the type of guy that even if he hates it, yeah, like I was like, on a show with him in Hamilton. Like it can't be bad. Where yeah. the promoter basically was stiffing everyone, including him, and yeah. he still went out there and had a great match yeah. with Matt Cross. Like yeah. I, bl- I believe it 100. Yeah, yeah like, Matt Cross. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not gonna be a bad match. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like I think Gullo would actually be. We should have him on one of the Nitro talks that we do. Please. Oh, a- absolutely. Like, it. yeah. Just when they pull a random like like zero comes out and stuff like that, you're like, what? <laughs> you're talking my language. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking my language. Um. All right. Do you want to get the tuggies? Yeah. Like, so, like Gullo, we. We're do... not going to do the tuggies right now. No. It's like we have to research and I just really want, put I, our what the tuggies are. I was going to tell Gullo even what tug time is. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Because well, it, like it started with it was supposed to be. Just like when you were a kid and like you were watching a movie and, and just something that would just just bring a bone right out. <laughs> like you would be watching and then next thing you know it's just like, Well, I'm rock hard right now. <laughs> and this is a fifty year old woman with a little bit of like like Mimi Rogers would be on like some <laughs> shitty thing with just some cleavage. <laughs> And you'd be like, well, all right, cool. <laughs> like, I'm a That's little a, older, so, a like... Lot, a lot of people always yeah. end up turning it into porn, but, like, yeah. the original idea was it was supposed to be, like, a, an actual movie, like... Like, basically, like, think of, like, what Mr. Skin is... But, like, the reality yes. of it that's in your head. Like, Could it be, like, a TV show? Yeah. Yeah. Because the yeah, chick from VR Troopers when I was a kid was the first oh, okay. one. I'm like, yeah. Because she kind of looked like that? Sunny. And I don't even know her name, but I know okay. she was also... Carly from General Hospital. Don't judge me that I know that. What was VR Troopers? Right v- VR Troopers was like a fake 
um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So they were like a, a, a like a generic like. Pretty sure it was VR Troopers because yeah. Because I'm thinking it might have been Beetleborgs. It wasn't Beetleborgs. It was VR Troopers. <laughs> Beetleborgs. You are in a weird, <laughs> yeah, weird time, tone right in now. A weird time warp right now. <laughs> she was there on, was Animorphs. I mean, got she weird. was on General Hospital. Too? Yeah, she ended up I, being like I, Sonny's like wife. She was. A, they had many Carlys, I guess, and she was one of them. Oh, okay. But VR Troopers, the like, blonde chick from. She but, looked like Sonny. But she actually looked like yeah, she looked a little bit like Sonny, and I remember liking Sonny because it was the, everyone's first wrestling crush. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. It yeah. was uh, Sarah Joy Brown. Yeah, Sarah Joy Brown. Yeah, and I remember just going, oh man, I, attractive. I'm attracted to Sarah Joy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that. I, is. I don't remember her name, but I just remember VR Troopers chick. VR Troopers. What yeah. what, what channel was it on? Fox. Oh, Fox was just like Power Rangers works. Yeah. So now we're gonna do everything that's like Power Rangers. Oh, so it was like so Power Rangers VR Troopers. Beetleborgs. Yeah, <laughs> like they would what just, said Animorphers? Animorphs. Yeah. You know, people, Animorphs sounds teenagers familiar. Teenagers, they would have skills that animals have. Like, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that breakdown. Yeah. Oh, no. Hot. Oh, no. I've done it. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we need towels to clean that up, Kev? I feel kind of bad. Yeah. It's <laughs> not, not too worried about You know what work here is the scrubbing bubbles. We're not getting into that on the podcast. All right. Back to tug time. No, okay. <laughs> we Let's talk about coming bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, hey, we'll kind of get by quick. And we hear that water. The uh, protein shaker one. gimmick. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the dead air. No, it's okay. Yeah. But this is good. The little break, because we're about to get fucking... <laughs> about to get real. Yeah. We're get, about to get boned up here. Yeah. So Andy's idea was... What'd you call him? No, no, it was Greg Bain. I'm going to give him... Uh, you got to yeah. give him, like, all the things. He came up to me at the Smash Show on Sunday, and he goes, Hey, man, I listen to all your podcasts, and I have a great idea. You guys need to do the Tuggy Awards. And I think... Greg Bain, if you're listening to this, and I hope I'm getting that right. I hope your name's not Gary. <laughs> yeah, that's Gary Bain. I'm pretty sure. Kind of a pretty Bain. badass name, but Greg Bain. Yeah, yeah. So I have it. I have it written down on my phone. Um, came if, up, came up with the idea. Yeah, it, he came up with the idea. I think Greg Bain comes down, and we have Greg Bain on the guest. He's like the guest. Yeah. For the Tuggy Awards. For being his idea. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I think that's a that's a pretty fair thing. Like. You come down to North Tonawanda, we give the North Tonawanda treatment. Uh huh. Sweatbox Studios. You come Sweatbox, down here, yep. we buy you dinner. A little food after. We buy you dinner. And uh, we come up with, we got to come up with categories. And Mike, the one thing though is like the best non, like, I, these are like some of the categories in my head, like the best non porn tug <laughs> that you've had, <laughs> the best porn tug you've ever had. Yeah. Um, those are those are both real. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you need to talk about the most tugged, like the most unanimous tug. You know what I mean? Like, it, which is going to be hard because of the age gaps in all of us. So yeah, my, because like the internet and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like the internet didn't exist until I was in my twenties. So like for me, like you know, the most tugged. I don't know. Like I go back and hit. It's it's probably like. A porn star or something like that. I love how serious this is getting. For sure. Like, and then it's like, like, then there's a whole subsection in that of like porn where like, I like a little man meat in my porn. I can't watch lesbian stuff because I can't put myself in the situation. I don't have girl parts. There's got, so I got to see some meat. Yeah. I'm with, in it. I'm with you on that one. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what, like, and then there's I'm got, not v, I'm not a vegan. I'm not a vegan tugger. <laughs> you know what I'm I, like, I got to have meat in my diet. I'm, try, I'm trying to think of the name for the category, but it would be like, like you've talked about before, you know, your mom would get the Victoria's secret catalog. Yeah. Like a, not like a non, I don't know, like a non film. Yeah. Not yeah, 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 yeah. mag tug like, like a like, like, erotica. Like, my, mom, like, my mom had one with like a magazine Yo. with like Civil Shepherd on the cover, and I was way too young to see it. And I was like, yeah. "Whoa, what, what is this? that?" Like, so non, you got to have a, like a magazine tug that's yeah. non non porn. Then porn magazine tug. Then like non, like a visual like moving thing that is not porn that you tug to. What do you mean? Then. Like, like so the way a, a chick is just fully dressed. You're just torque. <laughs> I probably have the weirdest non-porn magazine one. I'm saying like I'm watching. Yeah, that, drop, that's what I'm saying. Like, right now. So there's got to be three categories. Yearbooks. 
Listen. Oh, you're oh, weird, man. No, man. Because then you just think the visuals get in your head. Like your yearbook. Like I mean, I have. I'm not talking. I don't know. Yearbooks. I have, <laughs> I have talked about this tug before, where like you like have to look. Like you have a girl in mind. You're like, man, that, you're like attracted to this girl, and then you go to porn and go. I bet her body looks kind of like this, naked. And then you have to like watch that porn and think about that girl. No? No, yeah. No, no, yeah. No, I'm with you. Well, I was yeah. totally with you. I would like do that with a strip club. There. So there used to be a strip club in Canada called Seductions. I guess of they're course, not. Yeah. And it was weird. Was they real... looked like every girl I went to like Kenmore school with. So yeah. if you had oh, like. Had if like you, oh, yeah, we, we would go all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, like, it was just, <laughs> just fulfilling fantasies. Do you rem- <laughs> This is a fucking crazy one, right? Do you remember. I remember skipping school. Obviously, I looked like a man when I was like in fucking middle school. <laughs> so. Um, we used to be able. I used to be able to get into private eyes just mm-hmm. over the border uh, when I was like fifteen. I was they just w- there recently, actually. They wouldn't even. I haven't been to a strip <laughs> club with, with Puff and Danny. Actually, I was oh, just yeah. there recently. Yeah. The last yeah. time I was at a strip club was with our last guest, like okay. James Dewey's in like two thousand five. Yeah. Oh wow. I just don't go to strip clubs. Um, but I remember the smell of whatever the girl was wearing the first time I ever had a lap dance when I was fifteen. Which is insane. I smell. I can still smell it and still get chubbed. I like. Uh, I've <laughs> Sorry, heard, guys. I've heard, <laughs> I, I get chubbed right now. I uh, uh, I've heard Jordan say this before. Like when you guys like, because we don't think about this kind of stuff being from Buffalo. But like Jordan said, you guys would be on tour with people from other parts of the country, and just be like, yeah, like you know, we live twenty minutes from the Canadian border. So like, I mean, like Andy was fifteen, but like some of us were like sixteen, seventeen, and you could literally get across the border. And go to a strip club in Canada. It's fully naked, yeah. and they, I mean, you know, you put like basically a quarter in your mouth, which is like their like loony or toony, and some like adult woman would take her fake boobs and take it out of your mouth or like whatever. It's like, insane. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, other parts of the country. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was, like, I, mean, I, was like, I was a late bloomer. I like didn't talk to people until I was like twenty. <laughs> so like for me, like I mean, I was about to explode when the, the first time I touched. Uh, like a, like a stripper girl was like, "Hey, put your hands on my hips," and I was like, <laughs> "Great!" Like touching female skin that like is it my mom's or sister? This is insane. See, it was like the, it was like the school dance accelerated. This yeah, is like, yeah, 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 yeah. This, like, is, this like, is wild. This is a grown ass woman. Like, yeah, this like is this awesome. chick. Yeah, and it was like, wow. I still remember the way she smelled. Everything like. Still to this day, I still remember the first time I ever made out with a girl. I still remember what she was wearing. Uh, oh, like smell wise. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Chris Chris Isaac was on. <laughs> oh, oh, w- wicked game. Yeah, yeah. It's a good... It was wicked game, just over and over again. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, wicked that's a good game one. Yeah, that's the per- that's the perfect one. Actually, yeah, make out. It's it probably a new song by when I was making out with her. I remember for a while, like I hooked up with some chick in high school, and she had like Tommy Hilfiger. Oh yeah, girl like perfume mm-hmm. on, and it was the, for like that was real popular at the time. She was doused. So I anytime I feel smelled like, that stuff, I almost feel like boner smells. We should probably get that in there. Yeah, it's it's like boner, what that smell makes a, you get a boner. Should be a category. But it's boner like just, smells. Yeah, it's just like you smell it, you get chopped. Because yeah, that's it. I remember like Ken, Susie. I'll throw him. I always throw Ken under the bus uh, on a live on a live mic. Ken Susie used to say that he would jerk off in their their tour van so much. Ken Susie of Unearth said he would jerk <laughs> off in their van so much that when he would see his van, he would get a boner. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We got to get Ken on the podcast. That's incredible. Oh my God. That's that's a, podcast would be insane. That's incredible. He said that he used to like when he, as he like saw the van pull up and he'd walk up into the van, he would like automatically just start getting hard. <laughs> get it's so sick. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Like the last impact loop, I wasn't even there yet, and Laura texted me and she was like, "Hey, you know, they're asking me to do some stuff on Twitch with like Impact, and they were asking me about like your podcast too." And I was just like, "I don't think they know what we talk about." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I don't think that Impact can't. Wrestling presents Tug Time. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm saying like it's not exactly just wrestling talk. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, they have tugboat on." <laughs> Uh-huh. Oh, tugboats evolve very The whole time you said, as soon as you said that, all I was thinking of was a bad, like, Twitch pun that r- came with jerking off. <laughs> like, that was it. And I couldn't come up with anything. You got nothing. Damn it. Um, uh, yeah, Ken is like, a, like, Ken has some great, because, like, back in the day, too, like, before, like, young Greenhorn 
uh, champion. Fresh, fresh in the business, Kevin Bennett. Uh, Kevin Bennett, like, is on a computer right now with, like, headphones. He's, like, doing some work over here, right? <laughs> or we have a computer right here that's, like, tracking everything that we're saying, right? Like, back in the day, there was, like, you'd have to go into, like, a fucking studio studio for, like, this setup. You know what I mean? So we used to have to literally go to porn shops. Go in the tug ba- booth. Oh, yeah, the little room, yeah. And then you'd pay, like, you put five bucks in, and you'd get, like, ten minutes of, like, 60 channels of porn, and you'd just sit there and fire through. Is that is that how they, like, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to show off, I've never been in one before, but, like, they, so it gives you channels, and you just, like, oh, yeah. pick the channels. Some of them do. There's one yeah. where you pick your DVD. They actually have DVDs that are just for the, the room. Oh. You'd be like, I want this DVD. And okay. Because, like, since, like, The Crow 2, I was, like, I thought it was, like, a live person. Well, there <laughs> is. So I think, yeah, do those do exist, too. right? Yeah. So that's another thing that I think I've talked about on the podcast before, where there's a place called the... Lucky lady yeah. in San Francisco. I hope this is the story I'm thinking and of. And you would go in and like you would, you'd never tell your bros, hey, "I'm going to Lucky Lady to jerk off right now." Yeah. <laughs> would just sneak away. So like my strings just, would get just, changed, just my appear. guitar would be cleaned, all my amp stuff would all be like hooked up and stuff like that, and then I would just kind of like mm, disappear, <laughs> yeah. and then like go to the Lucky Lady, and then you'd go in and you'd do the peep show, right? So it's a peep show that's like. In a circle. So it's there's like walking a, tall like, with a rock, or you're like yeah. <laughs> there's a girl in the middle, and then you're you just your thing comes up. She's right there, and then like she puts on like a sex show while you just jerk off, right? But the weird thing is, is that there's other dudes also jerking. <laughs> you can see in the circle. so you can you're catching a glimpse of a guy pumping his meat. <laughs> But you're like focusing on the girl, and you're like, oh, I'm not gonna focus on that. So you're just you're beaten, and it's it's basically you're just in a beat room. It's a beatbox. You're beatboxing in, in like a room of dudes, and then the worst is one goes up, and then you see another dude from the tour, and you're like, oh, fuck, man. like instantly you're like sinking in your seat. Like, oh fuck, man, I, I really can see this. I really yeah. need this. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. Like, come on, man. I can't even watch porn on you porn. It says like being watched now. Just to think of yeah. other like I don't know why you porn does that. Like oh. these porns are being watched now. Like thanks for letting me know what guys are drinking yeah, off to. Like, yeah. like yeah. Uh, you know. But I do like webcams. Yeah, webcams are cool. <laughs> because like there's just marks out there. They'll spend so much you know money. What, yeah, like, you know what I like and you can sit back and enjoy the rides. What I like insane. about webcams, I, I have like a bunch of friends who do that. So like it's, it's a nice. It's and nice they're great. Money. Like I, I don't have like a friend that is a webcam girl that isn't an, a great person so i'm like i'm helping the cause screw it i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. throw 20 down on this chick let her do her thing and i'm gonna do my thing and yeah. my you know what i mean what, what i don't understand about like see I, i'm a quick jer- jerker offer like, yeah. like, like <laughs> man i i got stories of just, see, i'm talking marathons see i, I want to be in and out like for me it's like it, like and some guys like want like to watch like who who watches the full 45 minute porno yeah is there like i, I mean he, they're out there but, yeah, yeah I or, or, right. or like webcam like oh they like they they tip her like i don't know why no one just does the tip 500 to get her naked why are you tipping yeah. 10 for a boob tease to yeah. 20 for a boob, like butt tease i never do that just go private and then you're just yeah. in there and it's just yeah so we always talk about this like my whole i like i like the fake scenario of like a guy and a girl like hooking up outside you know what i mean like they're just together by chance and then they just end up hooking up like yeah. i love that <laughs> so uh right now like the taxi the fake taxi oh, loves the fake taxi. Oh. it's like my favorite and the guy is just like he's just over the top like does this <laughs> he does good. this like weird reverse yeah. fucking thing yeah. where like his butthole is just right in the girl's face <laughs> and he's, he's dicking down it's, it's into a, her it's intense. I love it yeah. and like, I'm just like and my dick isn't big enough to like do that so like, <laughs> like does, it would be does awful does it almost every time yeah and my like can't, my like my quads would break, break if I did yeah. because I'm, I'm I'm not long enough it's almost, like a, it's almost like a weird dance move or something so cool dude <laughs> it's and he, like just like like, the girls are always so into it. Obviously, they're getting paid because he he has another site that he does, like a fake agent thing. Yep. And they're all on it. Oh, yeah. The, oh, casting couch. Yeah, that's what Whoa. it is. So like <laughs> Love the casting yeah. couch. That guy's like a real dirtbag. Oh, I'm sure he He's is. Stabbed He's by like really? one of the girls' boyfriends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, true story. Fuck, man. What uh, they didn't know is it's not really for a job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like the yeah, disclaimer yeah, for everyone. Yeah. Uh-huh. And like, uh, I, you know, the, the fake taxi one I like because, and that's the thing, like on these beat marathons, I'm like, 
I start on one and I'm like, oh man, and it's it's it, it gets wild because like you kind of figure out what your flavor is that day. How many so times like, can you do it in a day? Well, no, 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 no. So this is what it is. Like I'll go on and I'll be like, oh man, like. Oh, I watched this Halle Berry movie last night. So yeah. like, oh man, look at this. Like, there's a light skinned black girl. Oh, she's so hot. And then you start beating, and then, you know, it like finishes, right? Like you don't finish, but like the thing finishes, and you're like, eh, it really wasn't what I was expecting. And then all the like, rec- so like she all the recommended cool. videos. Yeah. So you're like, doing exactly how Raven describes a wrestling match should be. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yes. Have you ever heard that description? A little bit. And then I'm like, Raven I'm, describes it to masturbation. Yeah. Then I'm like seven or eight videos down and I'm like I'm like oh my god this girl's like pushing 200 pounds she's got the worst tattoos I've ever seen <laughs> I'm this is hitting it right now like, what is going on but like I'm way into this like this is great like just the way she's moving she's so into it like blah blah, blah. and like I'm not even looking at like I'm like dude if I ever met that girl oh my god like it would be the greatest thing in the world and she's like not even close to what I'm into. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's the fucking best. I love just, it's basically, what is that thing at Epcot Center where you can just drink all the beers? Oh, you like, save all the beers? Yeah. Like, what is that called? Like, when you go in there, uh, like just, Epcot Center, you go Epcot. In, it's like around it's the like world. International. Oh, around the beers around the world. Yeah, there beers around go. the world. That's like what it is. So, like, you go in there and you're like, oh, man, light-skinned black girl. And then it's like, Oh, I'm gonna get a little pumps from this Asian girl. I'm gonna get a little pump from this like trashy. Okay, blonde. so you wanna yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get oh here's this like sophisticated like older woman. Mmm, that's nice. And you're pumping the whole time. <laughs> it's not like it's not an aggressive pump. You're just keeping it alive. Like you said, you know I mean? Yeah, I feel like I'll do that, but I'll still get it done in ten minutes or less. Because yeah. I'll be like, oh, three minutes this video art. Let's I'm try this one. Let's... The other like I told the story on this, like I was pumping for a good 35, 40 minutes. Whoa. Not like not keeping it alive. You know what I mean? So like it would get to the point Dude, where you I just want to let it happen and get kind of, But I kind of also want the release, man, of what I want. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not there yet. We're in a world where you can just have whatever you want. Uh-huh. Like, it's a beautiful thing. It is. So like you can just go on and you're like, what you think you're into that day isn't exactly what you're into. And then you're doing beats. You're just beaten. And then like <laughs> I fell asleep. I passed out, dick dick out, just <laughs> and with the light on, like dick out, light on, just computer. <laughs> wake up an hour later. I go, oh man, I was in the middle of this, <laughs> and then just reach for the computer, click, click. go right back to where I was, and then beat for another forty five minutes. The best thing is that I was like pulling laughy <laughs> Yeah, at that point in time. You're just roughing up a suspect <laughs> oh. at that time. Like the dude has been, he hasn't. He's he's already told the truth. Yeah. He said, well, but you're still just beating him, and for no reason, just because you're a sadistic fuck. Yeah, Eternal Fair is gonna get involved in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. That's it. That's like that's my oh. like beat thing. So I like like as soon as the guy gave me the idea, Jesse can attest for this. Like once I have an idea in my head, I mean it just goes, and then like I'm. I'm like 14 steps ahead of where that idea even is and I have to like wrangle it back. So like calling a wrestling match with me like when we get announced to wrestle I'm telling him a, a million things. I'm pulling basically what I would do to Jordan Buckley when I first started drinking coffee. Yeah. I'm sending him riffs nonstop. I'm like, yo, we're going to do this in this match. It's going to be fucking awesome. If you compiled everything that I had for every single match, every match would be a two-hour Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> like, it would just be like, oh, shit. Like, this is in the fourth heat. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, like, do this thing. It's going to be fucking awesome. Blah, I think blah. they just killed a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, you know... Thinking of this like Tuggy Awards thing, it's like, do we go full on on this? Where it's just like, do I think it should be? I think we should throw the categories out there. I think we should come up with categories, and then there's not really an award. It's just a self realization of what your best beat was to those categories, and it's each person's subjective award. And we can like we can have people vote too, right? Well, yeah, we can throw it out there. So, yeah. like, we, I think we can throw it out there. But that day, the award is a solo thing. So, I'm going to throw it. We should come up with categories. Yeah. And then that day, I give you my ballot. Yeah. You give your ballot. Uh-huh. You give your ballot. Kevin gives his ballot of, like, his your best beats in these categories. 
right? Then we throw them online and say, these are the beat categories. Oh, and people vote for them? And people go like that. And then we see, and we're like, oh, shit. Almost like a view, uh, uh, a listener's question day, you put your ballot in. Take a survey. Of, <laughs> of your tugs. And then we go through it, and we're like, oh, shit. Like, Pam Anderson really is the most tugged yeah. <laughs> like, Pam, thing. Pam Anderson Baywatch was and a I big want, deal. Like, the thing is, though, I want, like, female... I want female perspective also where like to me in my head like i remember when i was a kid my mom would say the craziest things and then now as an adult like i think of it and i go well, she was talking about fucking beating oh, at yeah. that point we're like she would say oh pierce bronson he could put his shoes under my bed any day <laughs> which basically <laughs> means my mom wants to get pounded out by pierce bronson <laughs> see that's a cool one though like my that's mom awesome. my mom th thought dog the bounty hunter was yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, cool. Yo, have but she also loves Shawn Michaels too. So yeah, that's great. We gotta have we gotta have George sing the dog, the bounty hunter theme song. I don't even know what he's the dog, <laughs> the big oh, man dog. Yeah. Okay. Meow, 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 bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes. <laughs> he has like his dumb laugh. That has to be like the biggest like guilty pleasure show. Oh, because I mean, it was. I want to hire Steve Blackman so to be a bounty hunter. Like you see that? Like Steve Blackman's a bounty, a legit bounty hunter now. Oh, really? Yes. And I like want to hire him. I don't know what I would hire a bounty hunter for. But I think our old merch guy. Who now is Modest Yahoo's like manager? Oh, I love Modest Yahoo. Um, Big K, uh, Kevin Rife. Yeah, Kevin Rife is. I want to say he has his black belt in karate through Steve Blackman. Yeah, because it's like he's in like Hershey or yeah, he's, yeah, he's in like a strip mall where he does like that. He like teaches like taekwondo and yeah, stuff, and he, cool. and he does bail bonds, and he's also a bounty hunter. Yeah. What a, he's what a taekwond, a, taekwond dad. He's like the Rex <laughs> Kwando of like that town of Pennsylvania. Uh, Mike Catillus told me this. I don't know because Mike, because Catillus, our buddy from Buffalo, Catillus trained down there with him for a while. Said that what? <laughs> what are you laughing at? That's just insane. Well, no, I'm just going down to Blackman's. He, like, he, he like lived down there, had a job and everything, and he said that Blackman. I know this is true. Uh, a lot of the reason Blackman got out of wrestling, he had a lot of concussion problems. Yeah. And he used to, when he would lift weights, he would, like, lift weights so hard, he would leave, like, a piece of paper with, like, his girlfriend's, like, name and number on it. And it was, like, if I pass out, call her to, like, get me taken care of. Because cool. he would go so hard. I, uh... And, like, had head problems. I, I forget whose podcast he was on, but he was on someone's podcast. And, like, he has a really cool story because he was, like... And he actually came out of the territory. Yeah. Like, which is up. weird. You ever like, see old pictures of him? Like, yeah, long hair? Yeah, yeah, long hair. And then, like, the WWF, like, had him. And then he, like, went away for, like, five years. And yeah. then came back. Like He, uh, when I, this is probably, like, 99, 2000, when I was in Cincinnati at HWA, and we got the developmental thing, and all those guys came in. Blackman was, by far, like, top three, one of the nicest guys there. Yeah. And even, like, because a lot of the guys, like, there was a lot of problems there at the time, and... Guys were hard to work with and stuff, and but black like I never worked with Blackman, but like all my buddies that did, they said like he was dude. He like gave me a lot of stuff. He was super nice. All his offense was great. Like he was he was the man, dude, and jacked as fuck. <laughs> I feel like if he wouldn't have took that sabbatical, he probably would have been like Shinobi the Ninja. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I did. Uh, I was I was in a world's gym with him once, and. Uh, I just I knew the gym had like this really shitty Smith machine that you never used, and like just saw like hey Steve what's up we talked for like a few minutes, and like in the middle of the gym, I saw him go over to it and he tried to do like behind the neck presses, and he like unracked it it went down like an inch and just racked it up and stood up and like looked at me from across the gym and he was like holy shit man that thing's a fucking piece of shit <laughs> and he was like Jesus and he was just like looking around the gym and like just talking to me and I was like kind of embarrassed because like the owner was really nice and he's like man I've been to gyms all over the fucking world and that thing is terrible <laughs> like just started screaming it was awesome <laughs> he was all he was a, he, he was a guy who I wish would have had the world title because <laughs> yeah. I just really, love Steve Blyman. really bummed he didn't get a world title <laughs> Yeah, just, Every, like, dude, but, the Steve Black music when he would come out with the fucking nunchucks and do like oh, a gimmick. It was and awesome. And then they turned into a glow The lethal turned, weapon. Yeah, and then they turned into glow sticks after a while, didn't they? Uh, he, he, he used to come out and it was like dark and he would do like yeah. a thing with like. And then glow he started wearing a cheese hat and it just got, <laughs> it got weird. <laughs> he didn't get that world title run I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, not, no. 
<laughs> Sorry, I segued, I segued there from fucking porn to Steve Black. <laughs> it, it, it's a natural occurrence. It, it, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's things that got me excited. But when did you... You went to... Private eyes with Puff and Danny. Yes. Did you guys? Did you guys go there for like a reason? Wasn't there like? Yeah, a there was a there? show. It was like a. It was that rookie show that Danny was on. Yeah. Oh. And I was a ring okay. announcer, and like Puff just came to hang out. I and, thought there was uh, like a special guest star there. Or something. No, no, she was okay. So she was at the Sundowner. We were also cheap. Ah. That we did not want to go there. Yeah. So, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. I love her. At one point in time, I thought there was a chance. <laughs> I didn't know anyone that knew her. Well, you're, just like, you're, you're like a tattoos. rock star. You yeah, probably have like the best chance check. to like get with a porn star, I, right? I figure of anybody I know, I would love her. <laughs> because we Mac, if you're listening, I would love you. <laughs> <laughs> when I uh, when I first moved back, like when I was in Cincinnati, and I first moved back to Buffalo, I started doing show. And then the first time I got booked in Canada was for Neo, and. um it was at it was in Niagara Falls, right across the border, and it was literally right across the street from Mince. Mince was the first strip club I ever went to, and I was like, "Dude, this wrestling show is right across the street from Mince," and I was like, "All oh, the boys are gonna go there and have like a great time." Like, <laughs> I I probably worked there five or six times. We never went once. It like blew my mind that we never went to Mince. That was right we across the street. Peppermint. Yeah, <laughs> up, upstairs, the gentlemen's club that was upstairs. I actually miss Pure Platinum in Fort Erie because it was literally right over the border. Was that the closest Bridge. one? Well, yeah, because like I lived kind of close to the Peace Bridge, so, and that was literally like a 10-minute drive. Yeah. <laughs> like, Pure Platinum was closer than Orchard Park. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Legit 10 minutes. <laughs> Legit. Like, you could see it was that- if you were driving, uh, you know, uh, on, the, on the 190 North. Like. I think I only went to that one once. <laughs> I remember Seductions was the real dirty one, right? So, yeah. So, well, Seductions was next to the Sundowner. So, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But there was those Fort Erie ones were like pure platinum and then oh, Maxine's. Maxine's, yeah. Yeah, never, Maxine's. Never yeah, there. Maxine's was that was that was a, that wasn't the cleanest place in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there, what was great about it is we would pregame at this Chinese restaurant. Mm. That's still there. It's like Happy Jacks, mm-hmm. and they would just Chinese these... restaurant. But you would drink there. Oh yes, because well, he would. Ma- he has these drinks and like pineapples and stuff, and like he. It was like, the strongest drink in the world. You're like 19. Oh, you suck down a Singapore sling that's mostly alcohol, <laughs> yeah. and then and then you go across the street to Maxine's. It was fantastic. Yeah, that's, it's great. like at a young age. That's, yeah, that's 19. Some... I, I saw one. Of the, I saw my first like absurd drunk actually at Happy Jacks of a Chinese restaurant. Also, we're sitting in there at Happy Jacks, uh-huh. and this guy. Just started pounding on the table, and he's like, "Call me a cab! Oh, Call me a cab!" And like, he's like, "Poor, like frightened Chinese workers are like, okay, okay, okay." Yeah. So literally, they're like, "It will be a few minutes." They come back, they're like, "Hey, we called you a cab. It will be a few minutes." And he just starts pounding on the table, cab. Cab, Jesus, cab, Sounds cab, awesome. just cool. constantly just screaming, yelling, just cab. terrifying the so owners. Finally, the cab comes. He walks out, whatever. We're there for another 30 minutes. The guy comes back in. I saw him get in the cab. <laughs> he comes back in and he goes, where's my cab? Oh, my God. No, at this point, I'm a liquored up 19-year-old, so we just get in the car. We just start throwing snowballs at him. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your cab, motherfucker. Love, that's, <laughs> like, that's the best part of the story. Yeah. Yes. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck uh, you, cab guy, terrorizing poor Happy Jack. I don't know. I don't know if this is a good segue or not, but. Go, I hope we we always talk about this. We got to talk about the stiff neck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, let's see if we have oh, what? <laughs> so, if, yeah, you, you you take this one. <laughs> Wait, so, say it again? Stiff nights. What's that? Uh, they're a pill that you can find at your local porn store that uh, for 72 hours, anytime a woman touches you, you get a stiff one and you can Gullo, go. Gullo's worse. You better can, than Viagra. Uh, better than Viagra. I've done Viagra. Viagra is not. <laughs> I've done Cialis. <laughs> I've ne- just, never tried the, Cialis. They call it the weekend drug. Oh, okay, yeah. But, oh, so there you go. That, yeah. Vi- Viagra I've done Rhino 7, did nothing for me. That's uh, the gas station one, isn't it? Rhino 7, you can get at porn shops, too, though. But that's supposed to be that, like, the most potent, like, non... <clears throat> like medical grade. Because I think that's what uh, John Jones got busted with, wasn't it? Were they just 7? They might have just been joking yeah. and saying it was a Rhino 7, yeah. but... Yeah, stiff. But no, these things and, and stiff is still around, too, the, right? Yeah, and the experience that I like, I I never heard that people were like, oh yeah, they're great, they're great. And I was like, I'm not going to a porn store and buying a goddamn. <laughs> but I said, you know what? Let's just walk in. And I walk in, and there's like four dudes in line for <laughs> these stiff nights. And, and it was like a Wednesday at like seven o'clock at night. It wasn't like I was going in on a yeah. Saturday at ten. Like and I'm like, what the hell? And like this lady's like, oh yeah, they, they they're a hot seller. Uh, <laughs> they, there's deals on them. You like you get the two packs, you buy two two. 
two packs to get one two pack for free. Stiff like, Nights is a great, and, is a great but name. They're, and you see, like over the years of me doing Stiff Nights, I've seen all the other dick pills come and go. Yeah, yeah. In the front case, but the Stiff Nights are still there. Like I, no. I first heard about those. It was well over five years ago. Fact, I originally was around. scared and like Googled them, and I'm like, am I gonna Did die? You go to Village News. Is there a Ken Moore West guy? They don't have them at Village News. Yeah, they're not, they also they're don't have them at the Elmwood, or not Elmwood, the, the weird bookstore in Niagara Street. Yeah. That's, that's like infamous for people doing it in the, the there's tug a, room. There's a porn... There's a porn store called Village News. Oh yes, my friend, my friend John worked there. He's a very creepy yeah. guy. He yeah. liked to sniff girls' hair. So working at a porn store, and he also uh, drove Mr. Cool. So he had some interesting jobs. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Super cool. Shout out to John Myers. Yeah. He's, he's out there listening. <laughs> nice guy, but very creepy. Yeah. Uh, but, um, the it's like the, the the logo on there is hilarious too. It's like black and it looks like super like hip and then it's like I think it's like two like red there's silhouette. lightning yes yeah. yeah. yeah, everything that's cool yeah I forget their stupid slogan too it's <laughs> but like yeah it's like Viagra it's like one time like this is set legitimately 72 hours like yeah. like you, you time it out perfectly you will have a weekend full of sex no t- yeah. no, no doctor prescription no needed. you just gotta take it on an empty stomach and uh, you're good to go you take it on an empty stomach yeah you're supposed to like so the best time is say you wake up you take it you know drink your coffee and then eat your food and then oh, you're good okay. to go it's 20 you can eat like 20 minutes after you take I've, it. So. I honestly get nervous about taking a multivitamin on an empty stomach, let alone really? a dick pill. <laughs> like, that's but, uh, um, yeah, man. Like, it's... <laughs> Like I'm like their biggest advocate, yeah. but uh, yeah. I don't know. Make a sponsorship they're, 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 Yeah, they're just fun. I would love to have stiff nights. <laughs> I would wear a stiff nights t-shirt every time I went on stage. <laughs> I love... The fa- I'll hit up Stiff Nice. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's I'll it. send him an email. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they do very well. Yeah, they, yeah seriously. They better, they better like I've seen them come and go, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's Stiff Nice is still there. And the fact that like they aren't like because you know most shit like comes out, it's really strong. I mean, this is supplements too, and then they get taken off. They get taken off the market, and then they come back, and they're not as they're just yeah. pure shit. It's the same thing. It's, just, it's, it's still been rock, the same. Still and like you look they it up, and like there's one guy that had a heart attack, but he probably just had a really shitty or probably took five of them hell the first th- thing it says cbs news stiff nights dangerous male sex pill <laughs> see but i looked it up and it's one guy it's yeah. like, who knows if he ate, ate cheeseburgers a day or that one like guy that. died from a fedra stiff too. nights reviews one big reason you shouldn't buy oh boy you want to if you want to dig into that review i'm in i'm in <laughs> Stiff oh, there it is with the, with the lightning and everything. Yep, that's, 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 that's the two pack. Yeah, what's the slogan? I, I forget the cheesy slogan on front. Mm. It, it'll, it'll have it right there. Regain the thunder. <laughs> yes, we <get> it. <laughs> I like that. Knights is is underlined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too. Um, How does it work? Reviews. You take it, then blood flows to the penis. <laughs> The interesting thing that happens is the only thing that happens is blood flows to your penis. All it does is give you wood. All I got from using stiff nights was a hard penis. What? That's, that's a review. That's right what the yeah. point of it is. Yeah. What, what else did you want from it? I don't get it. What, you, do you want to fucking do karate? Like, yeah. <laughs> Rich from Texas. My head was pounding less than two hours after taking it. It gave me the worst side effects ever. It just gave me a hard on, and that was it. These are the weirdest. I, I feel like <laughs> these dudes took it with no like plan, to, like no sag. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like I'm gonna take this pill and see what happens. I'm like go work out. Yeah. And see you what you wonder why you have a headache? Because you've had an erection for two hours and you have not came. <laughs> yes, That's, That's why you have a fucking true. headache, Rich. <laughs> I've not had sex. My man Chu Lee. It says, Stiff Night really works to give you a hard dick. Don't take over the recommended dose or you'll be dead hard on it. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. You take yeah. the one pill every three days. You do not yeah. want to. Oh, yeah. One tablet about an hour ahead works well. I will not make you. It will not make. I will. It says, I will not make your dick longer <laughs> or hard as fuck. Hard as I have, fuck. I have tried several other products that cost between seven to ten dollars per each. Some worked and some didn't. Uh, some didn't do nothing. Put, take my money. This is a very. I'm going to read everyone like this. <laughs> I'd say try Stiff Nights once, and if it doesn't work for you, don't buy the shit again. Use great another product. Great advice. Austin, where can you purchase Vigorix Plus? <laughs> that was the next up. review. The only issue I had with using it was a literal three day hard on. <laughs> it never went completely flaccid. It, it does randomly happen. Like it never went completely flaccid. Oh, shit. It was difficult to put pants on. <laughs> I couldn't feel anything either. 
It's an awesome review. It will be perfect for your tongue tie marathon, to be honest with you. Um, this man says, Where can I get stiff nights? Please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Walker just has a picture. This guy's got balls. A picture of himself, yeah. Hey, Keith. Sorry, bud. Looks like they don't sell them anymore. What's your goal? You looking for something to help with stamina, erection quality, etc.? Or do you need to gain some size? <laughs> they want a know. liar. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let me know, and I can recommend some products that really work. Dave, bestenhancementreviews.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 that guy works for Extends. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I haven't had a problem yet. Only problem is two capsules for the price of one. It's hard. He threw that in there. Yeah. Not to buy them. I feel great, and ladies love it, too. <laughs> That's, and that would be my review. Exactly. I'm, my word for word. I'm 64 years old. You recommend for someone my age? <laughs> People are just asking. He just puts that out, not to a doctor. He just puts that on like a forum. Yeah, what do yeah, you guys yeah. think? Y'all have a heart attack? I'll be all right. Guys, I love it. That's I want to get some stiff nights. <laughs> dude. dude. <laughs> game Your marathons game will get longer. Changer, yeah. Just but for beating. It, it really, though, it will constantly give you an erection for three days. Like, oh, did you ever hear about that, though? Like, if you overdose on, like, that or Viagra, they give you that shot of adrenaline in your hard dick. Oh, yeah. It's not, I, I never, I'm smart with that. Like, I just. That's, I'm not. That's intense. You know, I, I like, they say, you take, like, I say, one, I usually take one a week. Maybe two, oh. but one a week. Are you having that I, much sex? I appreciate your honesty. Oh, yeah, man. I don't. The wife likes to have sex. That's awesome. Sorry. You're married. Yeah. <laughs> this, this could be on the interwebs. You yeah, yeah, yeah. She's you're a married. very nice lady. Get you're married now. Yeah. Yeah. You're married now. So yes. like uh, the myth is that like sex stops when you're married. Depending on who so you're I with. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't know what the fuck you're doing. It, it all depends on who you're with and stuff well, like that. So you really get you know, <laughs> the positivity that came out of his voice yeah. with yeah. Gotta know you're doing. <laughs> it's just a myth. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I haven't been married yet, guys. That's the only reason. <laughs> I, I thought sex stops. I love sex. Well, maybe stiff nights can bring you the one oh, you love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, check out that bulge. <laughs> that's, but I, that's I, I promise you it's not a triple A battery. Okay. Do you remember when you were like 17 you would just get random erections all the time? Yeah, I still do. I'm stiff nights. Oh, see, I don't, and stiff <laughs> nights really? does that for me. Makes like, you, I, makes like, you feel you're 17 Yeah, again. now I'll be like driving in my car, yeah. listening to sports radio. For some reason, I got a chub. That's it's a like, great, you know, that's a great feeling. Listen to some guy complaining about, you know, the Buffalo Bills. And I got a chub now. Like, what, yeah. the, what the hell is going on? Sports talk radio. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. Hey, it's just good to feel young again. Yeah, guys, guys, I'm just trying to feel young again. That's, that's Andy's quote. He just wants all his buddies to feel like they're 15 again. Yeah. Hey, you're that. lucky, man. You, you just still get the random erections for no reason. I said that to Alicia because she, well, at the time, I didn't know how she was. And she, like, does interviews with her dad. So, like, I didn't want to sit there and just be like, I want all my friends to come. <laughs> and then, like, look at her and then look at her dad like, sorry. Yeah, I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah, sorry. But the real, I had to alter it and just say, like, I want my friends to feel 15 again <laughs> in front of them. But in actuality, I just want all my friends to come constantly. Because there's nothing better. It's the best. The best, the best stress was, relief. The best was we did, we did the interview with Alicia and her dad. And he said that, like, I just, I just want all my buddies to feel 15. And then, like, we did a podcast, like, a week or two later. And he's just like, yeah, I just want all my buddies to come and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, on, on the Instagram, yeah, as her dad comments. And he's like, oh, it turns out Andy has a different different yeah, yeah. saying than what he said on our show. Yeah. <laughs> totally heard it. You know, I like, you know, looking at his daughter and going, yeah, I'm not going to say anything about come. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. you listen to every one of these. Yeah, I think so. I'm sorry, bud. I'm not going to ever say the word coming in front of Alicia. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's Alicia, not. if you're listening to this, you're not here. So I just <laughs> love how dirty this show is. Like, I'll listen to it. It's just fantastic how dirty this show <laughs> this gets. It's kind of like Howard Stern for wrestling. Yeah. Except we don't have whack backers. We should probably have a whack backer. We should find, I mean, we could easily find Like, you guys might be the, like, you might just edge out Tony Schiavone with the dirtiest <laughs> wrestling show. And it's, believe me, Tony Schiavone is really, really dirty. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. We really? Just, I just, oh, I, I, I he tells Klondike Bill sex stories and how much he loves Medusa's jugs. and like, Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, I just saw your head in the window he, going, like, he, back and I, forth. He is a dirty old man. He'll tell you. Mark Madden just, like, commented on something <laughs> Yeah, dude, you were telling us about it this weekend. Dude, dude he is that was a straight up pervert. That was weird. Like I almost a, thought it was, like, fake or something. Yeah, but. like, Mark, Mark Madden, like, commented on something. Oh, it was, like, the night when we did our Nitro review. Yeah. I mean, he's he, not, like, he's not verified on, on Twitter, but he had, like... Oh, he's verified on there. It is verified? I'm going to say this right now. 
Markman wasn't it even in WCW at the time that we review it. So '97, peace out, dude. Um, he's probably following it though because he, he was, was like, yeah, for sure. He yeah, was a but, guy. He, yeah, but he did, you know, because he did, he ended up doing commentary. But I think he did other small things there before he was doing commentary. Yeah, they, so they could have been working. He there. was probably one of the like local DJs for sure. He was like you know who wrestled Jimmy Hart and all that. Like I'm gonna yeah. take out a local DJ. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah I, I guarantee he did that. Do you, you know what's about WCW wasting money? Do you know they brought in like that? What was his name? DJ Run or something like that. It was really famous hip hop DJ from Philadelia. Well, then they, had the, ho- they had the host from Headbangers Ball. Yeah, WCB oh, paid Rack. him to yeah. DJ Nitros for like a good time. Okay. Like, why do you need a DJ? Uh, like, You're a uh, wrestling company exactly. out of Monday. Yeah, that was like that was like the best time to be a wrestler because like Lenny Lane, like someone said that Lenny Lane made 200k a year. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. these guys were clean. And he was up. barely ever on. Yeah, that's why you're saying like when those guys had to go like back to developmental after they were probably like really pissed. Oh like, yeah, like they went from living this like crazy lifestyle to like I remember the biggest one we used to think of was like I'm pretty sure like. Mike Sanders was making like almost a million a year at one point because he was doing like the commissioner gimmick there and like he was ma- and then you know to go from that on television to fucking WWF developmental yeah. he had like, above average baseball jerseys <laughs> yeah. but I mean after the above average thing he got like a monster push there for a yeah. while and then like yeah to go to developmental was I mean that, that had you know literally wrestling in flea markets and fucking it was a very strange time yeah I mean Chuck Palumbo too right yeah Oh yeah, Jindrak, Chuck, John, O'Hare, all those Johnny, guys. Johnny the Bull, fucking Dude, all the I, young dragons. Like how good Jindrak and O'Hare was. I can't imagine oh, yeah. them going from like the worst section of WCW history, which is like 2000, to being a developmental guy. Yeah. On that, because they were so fucking good. They had nothing. They were like it was like two pieces of white bread doing cool moves. But like, other than that. Like the moves that that dudes, those dudes could do for the size they were, was insane. That was. Did I ever tell this? Like, Jindra, like Jindrag was awesome. Yeah. But like, literally hanging out with him made me like want to quit wrestling. He would like, he would show up to practice with like basketball shorts on and like some Jordans and like a dirty wife beard and like his hat on sideways with just like his knee pads in his hand, just like oh, the wrestling practice, and then like. You know, just insanely high leap. You know, didn't stretch nothing. Just insanely high leap frogs. Like didn't have, you know, just complete natural ability. And then of course he's like six five and like jacked as fuck. And like you know, I'm like a hundred and ninety pound <laughs> kid like trying to put on weight. So I'm like I'm gonna work like I'm like doing deadlifts and like all this shit trying to put on size. So I'm like oh, I'm gonna work out with Mark Jindrak. I'm like Mark, can I work out with you today? And he was like oh yeah sure. I still remember we did back and buys. Our whole workout was we did three sets of cable lat pull downs, then we did the sitting cable rows, close grip, and then we did three sets of straight bar bicep curls, and then we were done. <laughs> it, was, it took, yeah, I don't even think it took 45 minutes, and you I was even, just like... You weren't even sore. Uh, like, I was just like, that's, you know, this guy is what I'm trying that's to achieve. That's all he needs to do. And yeah, and I was just like, you know, he can do everything that I can't and like what the fuck am I doing here like you yeah. know what I mean it made me feel like that's complete the one that shit. he's in Mexico right now yeah, he's like a god there oh yeah, yeah. he's just like soap operas and yeah fucking... and still wrestling oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's kind of weird like there's a documentary on Netflix and like strong man's in it oh, oh yeah, yeah and shocker it. Yeah. it makes yeah. you just love shocker yeah oh yeah Shocker's yeah. awesome yeah and, like dudes die like in the middle of the, the documentary and like it's a wild documentary. Like, a yeah, dude like, I, just dies. I yeah. think I started it and didn't finish it. I don't know why I didn't finish it. it. It's really good. And, like, you wonder, though, with Shocker, like, why he never got a contract with, a, like, an American company. Yeah, yeah. Because he could talk English. He speak English yeah, perfectly. Yeah. I, like, I mean, I wonder if it's, I've always heard, like, it's almost like a New Japan thing, too. Like, Shocker did really well in Mexico. Like, he opened his own restaurant. Like, yeah. all kinds of stuff. It's like, he's pretty set. Like, probably had a family and yeah. shit, too. It's yeah. kind of hard to get him to move. You know what I mean? He's not going to go to developmental or something. You know what I mean? Like, Well, like, even, like, TNA had him in the World Cups, and he never let him talk. Like, yeah, I'm like this yeah. guy this guy speaks yeah. better English than some guys that speak English as a first language. Yeah. Like, yeah. Funny, funny, quick impact story. Was, you know, I, I just worked Phantasma, like, a couple times. Yeah. Same thing. Mexican. Quito. 
Yeah, yeah came speaks around. speaks perfect English, and yeah. La- like Laura went up to him doing the like broken English stuff, yeah, like it. like ah, good, uh, you okay? Good to see you. And he was just like, I, I speak good English. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's okay. Like, yeah, what's up? yeah I was like, well, you don't have to do they, that. They need <laughs> to awesome. let him come out with his deer thing. Like the Fantasma, it, it is cool, awesome. He looks like an old superhero. Yeah, like he yeah. looks like an old like comic superhero. But I was just, it's like he's like a super good looking dude. Like, yeah. It's just weird, like. When they just wear masks. Like I said, we always bring up fucking Dr. Wagner Jr. Oh, yeah. He looks way cooler without a mask. Yeah. And, like... <laughs> Especially, he was, like, now. He was fucking awesome. I just watched, like, the uh, the Super Juniors tournament that he was in with, like, Liger. And uh, it was, like, Liger, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho. Uh, it was, like, 96. Was that the one, 96? Was that the one of the finals where Jericho and Benoit? No, that was the first. That's, their, That's like, the first ever Super J Cup. Oh, okay. The Super Junior's a little different. Um, oh, yeah, I was thinking the Super J Cup. Was yeah, that, Super J Cup only lasted, like, five years, and now it started to come back. Yeah. But, like, it was really weird. There was, like, a 96, 97. Then they took, like, a five-year break. Mm-hmm. Then they took, like, a three-year break. Oh. Like, on the tournament, this Super J, the Super Junior's, happens every year mm-hmm. and like this one was like it was just crazy like the who the fuck just posted a picture of it that's what made me watch it oh robbie birthside was in it yeah and they keep points of like how like who lost and who it's, wins dude, yeah you, some you of go. the go that, that was like tape trader stuff and like yeah. we, we, we i think we when i went to wrestling school we all had that we had the tape of the one where the finals was jericho and oh, Benoit. it's insane. just the matches are just nuts yeah you know, it's funny you bring up Robbie Brookside. Like, him and Doc Dean, I remember them just basically mm-hmm. being jobbers on, yeah. like, WW Pro. And then you get older and you get the internet, and, like, these guys were fucking awesome. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like Doc Dean, man. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. And this guy, like, was putting over El Dandy, like, on a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. on a WCW yeah. Pro. Like. <laughs> I was like, like, Robbie Brookside, like, he... It, I met him when we, he was at uh, Download Festival last year, and we, you know... W W E was doing NXT was basically doing like shows the three days that yeah. we, like there was the the music festival or whatever and uh, I got to meet like Robbie Brookside or whatever and he would like he told me like some crazy story of like playing like walk in festival and like uh, I think it's in Belgium and they would do like you know wrestling there and all the like at the time it was like the Attitude Era so like. All these German dudes wanted to go out there and like basically like cut promos, like these sick promos, and like Robbie Brooks says, like no one's gonna hear you because there's like music playing. <laughs> like, Why are you guys doing it? And everyone went out there and like cut these promos, and they were like dog shit. Their matches were terrible because it was all set up about the promo. Then Robbie Brookside goes out. He just gets in the ring, starts windmill headbanging or whatever like that. <laughs> the place goes absolutely ape shit. He has a great match, goes to the back, and all the German dudes are mad at him because it's a good match. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, man, like I'm in a music festival. I'm going to headbang. And fucking, I mean, just all know. Herman looking angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, all Herman was definitely on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, got, no, a, no, I got a crazy oh, awful Herman story. Oh, he's that, like the only German wrestler I know before. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's crazy. Crazy. I, so uh, we went on tour with... With, uh, with a day to remember in, in Europe. And at the time, they were using Gibson guitars. And Gibson guitars is like one of the hardest endorsements you can get in music. Like, because they don't need guys like me to use their guitars. Because, like, dudes like Joe Perry are using their guitars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. Angus Young has a signature. You know what I mean? But, like, my life dream was to get a Gibson endorsement. And, like, I had one. But, it, like, they, they wouldn't give me anything. And, like, even, like, if I wanted to buy a guitar, it goes through so much, like, red tape. Like, this guy has to approve something. This oh, guy has to approve something. This guy has to approve something. It's like, by the time you can do it, you can just go to Guitar Center because you know a guy there and get the same deal that they would have given, given <laughs> you. And it, you get it right on the spot and not have to wait, like, three months. You know what I mean? For a guitar. So... A data remembers like, no, no, man, you got to go through Germany. You got to go through the German guy. The German guy's cool. His name's Herman. He's awesome. And, I, I, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, oh, that can you like hook me up? And he's like, no, no, he's coming to the German. He's coming to uh, Hamburg, Germany, or wherever. Like it was probably there or Munich. He was in one of the bigger cities. Like, oh, he'll be there tomorrow, and he wants to like meet up with you, dudes. So it was like 2014. Um. And they just came out this like six series, and they had these like two Alpine white SGs that I really I was like fuck if I could get one of those, and I, I you know, I'll pay for them, but I get I want a deal you know what I mean I don't want to pay like full cross but I would use them nonstop, 
So me and Jordan are like in this room. We're gonna meet this dude from from Gibson, named Herman. And this fucking six foot six fucking giant comes through. <laughs> it's fucking Alf Herman. And you know right away, right? Oh, immediately. <laughs> yeah. so he walks in the door. I go, Alf Herman. And he goes, You know who I am? And I go. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Like, full-blooded <laughs> Italians, dog. And I just started thinking that me and him talk. This is, like, so bad for Jordan. Me and him talk about wrestling for three hours. And catering, Jordan just got up and left. Like, we didn't talk about guitars <laughs> one time. And then at the end of it, he literally just like, hey, man, like, just, I need you to, like, you need to, like, as soon as you get home. He had, like, a movie coming up, too. Like, he, like, is a huge actor in, in Germany. Yeah. So he's like, I have a movie coming up, but, like, please email me as soon as you get back. Like, I'm going to sort this out for you. I said, okay. So I get back to the States. Blah, blah, blah. I hit him up. And he's like, all right, you got to hit this guy up in Jersey. He's, like, the American rep, blah, blah, blah. And I'd already dealt with this dude, like, a million times. And he turns me down every time. And I go, dude, it's not going to work. And I, I'm like, Herman, you got to, like, say something to this guy. No, no, no. I promise, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, like, I email this guy. And the guy's just like, yeah, we can't do anything for you, bud. And that was it. Like, Herman, like, no, just I did, yeah, put all this work tried. in. Put all this work in with all Herman, and then, like, that was... I just got denied the, by the this fact dude. That, but the fact that you had to bro down with oh, him for dude, three hours. so fucking cool, man. Just telling me, like, crazy stories of, like, big names that would, like, leave WCW or WWF, and then, like, they have nowhere to go. So it's, like, usually they would go to Japan. They would do, like, these... You know, just like now, they would do, like, those crazy tours. The tours, where, like, yeah. You know, they'd go over and do, like, W Basically, what was what turned into WXW over there. You know what I mean? Like, they would do those tours, and, like, Alf Herman's just like, yeah, man, I wrestled that dude, like, a hundred times. That's crazy. I wrestled this dude a hundred times. You know what I mean? It's just fucking crazy. And, like, you could wrestle, like, all the names that came over? Yeah. I think he'd probably times. been the, the typical, like, hey, you know, yeah. He's, yeah. And he was basically, guy. like, if you think about it, he was kind of like, um, he was a little like, like, Germany's Muda, where, like, he could come to the States and, like, do stuff in the States, but then was, like, enormous... In back home. Back home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just the problem is, is I think at that time, I don't think his English was all that great. And now his English is like great. You know yeah. what I mean? But he's also like 50, you know? But he still wrestles. He's still like actively doing stuff every once in a while. So he's like semi retired or something. But he's huge. That, like, that's crazy, though. It was the best, dude. Like, but not many people would know like, oh, who Vermin. that was. The obscure yeah. references. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, like, out, like, oh, Vermin. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> I remember like tripping out over like, I think that. Obviously, like, we talk about how ECW was, like, for us, that was, like, our big... Like, I loved wrestling, but then when I saw ECW, it was just like, boop, this solidified it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's fucking awesome. This is fucking cool. So the cool yeah. kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, my favorite thing is, like, when we talk about, like, maybe doing, like, a promotion, you know what I mean? Or, like, helping ESW do something downtown Buffalo, which, with you... Like, this whole thing is, like, geared towards your our star. That basically is, like... <laughs> Hell yeah. I have this idea for a wrestling show where Gullo would be this, like, kind of... It's almost kind of like Lucha Underground, but not Lucha Underground, where there's, yeah. like, a linchpin for all this chaos. Yeah, so I'm like Quato, but it's a little different. It's yeah. different. You're basically, like... You originally a, said it, like, the dude from Thunderdome. Who was like exactly. the announcer? Yeah, you're basically like a conductor of an orchestra with like wrestlers. So like you are like, well, today you're gonna do this. You have two choices: like you either wrestle this guy or you die. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, like you know what I mean. And then they have like obviously like thugs behind you that are like, yes, we're gonna kill you. Like you know what I mean. And then like say someone does something stupid, like behind the scenes, and you know then you're just like. Wow, we killed him. Yeah, that guy's dead. <laughs> he's he's, he's kind of like you're kind of like the commissioner, but also like you know because we're almost like a warden. Like, yeah, like an overlord. I, like, I like the idea of like because the show is going to be like a, like what the fuck would you call it? like like a, like Mastodon does that with their albums where it's all like one thing. Yeah, like a rock opera almost. But yeah, like this is like where like it's a concept because yeah, a concept because yeah. we're not gonna like. You know, obviously started, we're not going to have television or any of that kind of stuff. Like, you're like the voice or like, you know, you tell all the story. You yeah. tell all the stories of yeah. the night. And you actually, like, that's the one. It's like a time. theater experience. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, that's like the one thing that I think some wrestling shows go is, like, context. If you were a guy that wasn't, if you're going to a wrestling show for the first time, yeah, you're seeing a lot of, like, cool athletic stuff. But, like, usually there's, like, storylines, right? You're not going to know that Bill Collier and... Anthony Nicometti have like this past beef or something like yeah. that. You're just walking in and you're seeing like this enormous dude that looks like an ass kicker, like beating up on a dude with a blonde mohawk. 
There's no like yeah, there's the no context. context. Like, what, like, why is this? Yeah. What is? Yeah, you know what's what I mean? happened before. Where here, like, or... no matter what show you show up to, you could show up to the fourth show, and you have a guy literally telling you like, the guys that come up next, yeah, have this pre-existing beef. You know what I mean? Like, this is the third time they have met. You know, blah blah. blah. And yeah. then, like, you he literally... slept with his girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. setting up the entire thing where it's like, you know, here's all this stuff, and we can do stuff. Like ESW, where you have like a video screen that shows yeah. like something or like that, but it's yeah. not in the context of that wrestling show. It's like somewhere else. You know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like, oh shit, like there's like a pipeline, like, and this is how this works. You know what I mean? Like, and then the wrestling match happens, and then you kind of have this investment of like, you already know who the vil- villain is and who the good guy is. And then there's some guys that are like, like a, my idea for Danny Garcia would be like a guy that's like literally getting his, like, we're going to break your arms if you don't go out there and do heel shit. But he's like this good guy. Yeah. And he's like afraid that like his mom is going to die if he doesn't like go out there and like rake eyes and fucking pull hair and like do it's, heel shit. It's great because it's like Roman gladiator days. Exactly. It's like we will kill you. Like, yeah. like I just, just want to sit there just scurrying above. Like, yeah. You know. And that's the thing. And it's like, like, I don't know if you guys like comic book movies at all, but like. Goldblum's Grandmaster. He's oh, like, yeah. It, it's exactly, that's what I would like to do exactly something like that. Exactly what it is. Yeah, so like, exactly super is. over the top. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. It's, gotta, yeah, it's gotta be fun. It's like, I don't know why they don't like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably like, like murdering thing. people and enslaving people. Yeah, exactly. Like, and it's like, it's, it's behind the scenes, not even that type of wrestling show where it's like, one guy is writing everything, and two guys, it's like, hey guys, check it out. Like, it's, we're going three weeks now till the show's coming up we all go meet at a place and we start talking and hey danny like you know the ideas are brought up by like the entire show and it's like hey i have this idea for andy blah blah blah. hey i like what you did on the last show but let's like up the ante on this it's a collective you know exactly we're like it's not like that everything is invested and everyone is the show is the show it's not one single guy yeah. Or like two single guys or something like that. Like we all help each other, put each other over in the best way we possibly can because the next show you might be wrestling that guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Or it's like, it, like, yeah, go they, ahead. Well, they always said that about ECW was like, you know, like Dreamer, Sandman, Taz, Sabu, Van Damme, like all those guys like could main event any show. Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. didn't have like their main event guys and like mid card guys. It was like they had a scramble of like no matter what, you know what I mean? They they had main event. They, everybody could be switched out. You know what I mean? Well, one of the best things I thought about the Attitude Era was, like, guys were in, like, multiple storylines yeah. at the same time. They were yeah. part of the whole show. Like, I just watched a Raw where, like, Mark Henry's out there four times yeah. in four different angles. Like, That's he's doing some yeah. with China, but he's doing some with D'Lo. Yeah. Then he's doing some with The Godfather. Like, it's... What is going on yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he's got four, like, and, 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 like, I love that where you just, everything is connected. And it's like, linked like, up. Like, like you like, said, Attitude Era, too, like, everybody was a star. It was, like, like Vince Russo said, it was like, you know, you wanted to watch every segment. Like, everybody was a star. It wasn't, there wasn't just, like, two big main event guys, and then the rest were, everybody else was, like, kind of okay. It was like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, The Nation, like. D'Lo and Mark Henry and The Rock and Farouk, they were all like, you know, main event players and Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Undertaker. It's like, you know, every everything yeah, was And awesome. you could buy like Steve Austin versus Val Venus in the main event. Because yeah. Because it was, oh, you you loved Val. Yeah, exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah. I watch that tonight. <laughs> I might watch about, like, the other day, like, this is really funny. Like, so I did like that. I did like a triple kitchen sink spot in our match the other day. And when I got to the back, everyone was calling it the Val Venus, which, I mean, I remember him doing that, but I didn't equate it to him. Yeah. I just thought of it like Hogan used to do that in Japan. So, like, I like the spot because Hogan did it in Japan. Yeah. And then, like, every Everyone. single person was just like, that Val Venus spot was amazing. Everyone calls him the Val Venus oh. knees. Yeah. Were you ever on a show with his brother? Val Venus' brother? Oh, yeah. You don't know about Val Venus' brother? No. Like, it goes by Vic Venus. Cool. Um, he's legitimately Val Venus' shoot, shoot, shoot brother. brother. He lives yeah. in Toronto. And, like, I remember one time I went to, uh, me and Vince Vailer were going up to this uh, show, and uh, the the promoter goes up to me. He goes, hey, kid, you a worker? I'm like, no, I'm an announcer manager. He goes, ah, it doesn't matter. You're in the Battle Royal. So, <laughs> hey, so man, I go, okay, so I'm going to make the best out of this. I'm going to, like... 
I'm just going to like be the coward manager under the rope. Like, hey, they can't yeah. throw me over this and that. Yeah. Well, Vic Venus just grabs me and like he starts like trying to work with me. And I'm like, yeah. and I've seen enough where I'm like, okay, like, yeah, yeah, I'll sell the punches and this uh-huh. and that. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm not really a worker. He goes, it's okay, man. He just continues That's to amazing. pull me in the That's corner. Amazing. Like, but with the lightest punches ever yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this and that and, and it's great because he like he's got gear just like his brother but yep. he wears like this new year's resolution revol- resolution shirt sure, revolution sure, yeah and he's just like yeah i'm big venus man <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah Vale's my brother yeah like <laughs> the, the funny thing, i love it like those stories that went like yeah you know he just threw me in like the battle royal it's like the biggest thing of that is like if you don't know how to go over the top rope properly you can kill yourself <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. so it's like when promoters just put anybody in the battle royal it's like dude like, that's yeah. not cool. I mean, I saw enough where, like, I was going to just, you know, ham it up and I was going to eliminate myself, which I did anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but, like, safely. yeah. But can you imagine if I was somebody who was, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to be a worker, man. Yeah, I'm going to start. And it was great. Like, it was, well, not great, but, like, there was guys in there that had no business being in there worse than I was. Yeah, like, I yeah. was like, I was like, what is going on here? Yeah, but, at least. But Vic Venus, yeah. That's there great. was a weird point in Canada when I was getting bookings up there and, like, everybody's uncle or brother was, like, <laughs> the stars like yeah, Vic Venus yeah. The Rock's uncle to loves of... to come around Ricky Johnson he calls himself the most electrifying uncle in sports entertainment that's, that's awesome <laughs> yeah, he comes around uh, Smith Hart was coming around a lot at that time yeah, Smith, yeah. Smith was it was like every, it was like the, it was it was like everybody's like relatives be, yeah it was like you know it, it was like hey come on down they're gonna you know they're gonna show Rocky and Frank Stallone's gonna be there it's gonna, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be like <laughs> one of my one of my favorite stories is fucking uh uh, As- Asylum or fucking Nick he's like Bret Hart's like his guy he's a huge Bret Hart fan and he fucking this yeah, is your very wet hair yeah very he uh so he's a big Bret Hart fan this is years ago and he was like I mean like I've gone through periods like this like everyone has these periods where it's like you know it's like a Tuesday and he's just you know just got out of work from his fucking shoot job and He's like driving home and it's fucking raining outside. He's just like, man, what the f-? you know, I've been wrestling for a long time. Like, he's in a rough spot. Like, I don't know if this is going anywhere. Yada yada yada. And then so he's like, he's sitting at a red light and he looks over to his left and it's Smith Hart is walking and he has like a whole bunch of bags from like he obviously like just got out of the Dollar General and was like refurnishing like a new apartment because <laughs> he just had like bags of like really random shit for an apartment <laughs> and he was just like, fuck man. <laughs> like, it's the worst timing. Yeah, to say something like that. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah, Canada's like, you guys like Smash is so cool, but there's some I've done, there's some I've things to be seen. Smash, Smash, Smash just on. Smash just came around in, like, in Canada. Like, there, like a, a, there was a show, and I, I hate like I hate bringing up people's names. When they just don't deserve, because the guy was so nice. But like, was it Mike Hart was on that one show that you did, and like that Smith's kid, right? Smith's kid was on a show. Oh yeah. And like, I don't want to put this on blast, but I'm gonna put it on blast. Uh huh. So I was listening. I was standing right next to fucking Tid. Yep. Like notorious TID. Yeah. And Mike Hart's in the ring, and Mike Hart goes for the sharpshooter and doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. He's like bleh, fumbling around, and he like in. Tid just yells like and just goes, "You're not even fucking doing it right. You're fucking hard." <laughs> and he's just nah. yelling at the top of his lungs. And I was like, "Oh my god, yeah. man, this is crazy. This is uncomfortable." <laughs> yeah, but great. Yeah. And I, at the same time, like it was me, him, and Brett uh, and uh, uh, um, Ben Ortman. Yeah, and we're all sitting behind like the merch or whatever like that. And, yeah. Like Ben's asking me about wrestling. He's like, "Oh, how's wrestling?" I'm like, "Oh, it's cool." Like. You know, Smash has me like finishing with a fucking choke slam, and I fucking hate it. I, <laughs> I hate choke slams, and like, just so unbelievable. They're so whack, and I'm just burying choke slams. And then Tid's just like, "Yeah, that's that's been my finisher for like." <laughs> I was like, "Sorry, man, you probably throw a really good." One. Yeah. <laughs> like I just I didn't know what to say. I was like, "I'm sure yours is awesome." You probably throw a great one, man. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, just burying choke slams and how much I hate them. Smith. <laughs> Smith Hart, like, not, I mean, he's passed away, so yeah, it's a little dead. But, but favorite Smith Hart stories, if you go on Wikipedia, it still might be on there. Uh-huh. About the Hart Dungeon. Yeah. When they sold the house, he, like, went in the house and wouldn't leave. Like, really? he's like, yeah, like, he, like, wouldn't leave. The, like, the cops had to, like, you gotta go. Like, was, was, he's like, no, you're not, you're not selling the Hart house. Oh, like, 
That's pretty heavy. He just wouldn't leave. Like. <laughs> Chained himself to like a furnace. I mean, even Brad said it. Like, if you watch later interviews of Brad, goes, oh, my wacky brother Smith. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know? That was like, who was it that was, oh, the, the Laughs Fan podcast or whatever. They like always break down shows, right? So they broke down the, whatever the, that show where like all the hearts were involved and like oh, Stone the, Cold the, got fucking blasted by oh uh, yeah the Stampede was it the show Stampede Reed that show was yeah. awesome yeah I feel like rocks. that show was the beginning of the Attitude Era when you hear yeah. all that crowd is like yeah the oh, crowd's um, insane but like that like it was um who's the blonde one Keith, not Keith Bruce, Bruce. He, was, he was that who should have been a bigger star by the way yeah they uh, said, Bruce yeah. had they, charisma they said he was not happy about that Bruce like went in and just started beating fucking Stone Cold's kidneys up <laughs> And, like, straight up, like, the next oh, day yeah. was Monday Night Raw, like, after the pay-per-view. And, like, like Stone Cold couldn't take a bump because his, like, kidneys were beat up. <laughs> like, <laughs> talked about it in, in Bret Hart's book. Like, Bret Hart talked about it in that book. And apparently, like, that day, like, Owen had, like, this super hot comeback that was supposed to happen. And he never got to it because those dudes jumped the fence. Oh, and, like, yeah. came into it, and Owen Hart never talked to him again. Well, Bruce is hot because I guess Owen got a spot, basically. Like, yeah. Owen was with the company, but, like, you know, Bruce pitched this idea. Like, oh, yeah, I should come after Brett and, you know, be brother versus brother and this and that. And, you know, Vince Hurdy goes, I like that idea, but give it to Owen. <laughs> So the whole well, the, the famous I mean, Owen Brett at the same feud time, is Owen was really good. <laughs> Owen was awesome, but yeah, it was, Bruce Hart was the one to pitch it, and they're like, "Yeah, we yeah. like that, but you're not going to do it." <laughs> like, yeah. That shit happens all the time. Oh yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing Owen Hart matches tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just we we just watched that squash match. Like Owen Owen around that time too, when they were doing like the Owen versus Brett stuff. Oh man, he is unstoppable. Well, you know, you, you, people talk about WCW's mismanagement. If in the early nineties. They have Owen and Eddie Guerrero like yeah. on like their worldwides like working yeah. matches, yeah. and you could tell at that point they're freaking amazing, and yeah, they yeah. just let him go. Yeah, yeah. like you, you know, Kane, Undertaker, all these guys that they had. Like yeah. that's the big one they give is like uh, TNA had uh, Okada forever, I mean, never yeah. did anything with him. Now he's like one of the biggest wrestlers in the world. It's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, I did want to ask you about. We've been going for like yeah, and we just talk it here. I, it's all, I mean, it's great. <laughs> right, right. I can't as long as you guys, I don't know if you guys have a time crunch. We or... don't. <laughs> okay, all right. We just go. But I did. I did want to ask you about um, the ESW show this past Saturday. Yes. Or really, like I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see too much of the show. But now the Ash just sent the YouTube links, and they talked about it. it. Was like a really cool moment. Was at the very beginning, like when you came out with the new production and everything yeah. like that. And then when you were in the ring and like the new lights turned on and like the crowd like popped, that was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. And like I wanted to start, but I was like, I just let it go. That's and then that's when I learned smart, from comedy man. where it's just like, yeah, 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 if like, you tell a joke and you get an applause, you literally re- ride that applause break until they're yeah. completely done. It was fucking. And then awesome. I went to, and I just I just let them. You that's know, great. Because I wasn't yeah. sure if they were gonna. Pop or not, and yeah. they popped. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, because I, I actually like idiot me. I actually thought I was like I wanted to watch people as they were coming in when they saw like the new production and stuff. But then, yeah, I didn't think about that. Like when the show started, that was like actually yeah. the moment. When, yeah, because when we showed the did the national anthem video, we didn't have the spotlights on. Literally yeah. hit it right after the show started. After the recap, yeah. that was it was fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like the way you said butcher and blade. Yes. <laughs> Oh, no, that was cool. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, some people don't understand the emphasis that should be on yeah. it. Like, the butcher and the boy. Well, you said it, like, with a, a nice crescendo. Yeah. Uh-huh. I come from, like, well, because, like, I, I do, like, I did wrestling first, but I actually do a lot of MMA and kickboxing yeah. and Here's boxing thing, and stuff. Though. And those I don't guys. Want people to say our actual names. Okay, well, I mean, I wanted to just be the I'm just a traditional the tag team. Oh, We're like yeah. this guy didn't he, and this didn't guy. Didn't you ask us that though? You did ask. Well, I said, you know, I, I you it. know, I said Andy Williams, Braxton Sutter, they are the butcher yeah, and yeah, the yeah. blade. I'd rather just be the butcher and the blade. Uh, do that typical. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but like you know, I in MMA and stuff like that, these guys want their names. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ridiculously said. Yeah. So like, I've just I've kind of put that in wrestling. Like yeah, yeah, you know, course. like my big thing is is like as a ring announcer is I love the old school, but I mix it with other things yeah, too. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I'm a big Gary Michael Capetta guy and Finkel and all that. And uh, but I like to like I'll I'll take stuff from from you know Bruce Buffer and yeah, I'll, I'll, Smart. You know you know who's, you know who's actually a boxing announcer now. Ken Anderson, Mr. Yeah, Ken, yeah. and he's fucking oh, awesome. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I, he's 
fucking awesome. Wait, he is it actual boxing now? Oh, so not like commentary, like he does. Like he legitimately does the ring announcement, which is is a smooth uh, transact transition. Like an HBO show, yeah, not that long ago. I think he. I could be wrong, but I think he did the Lionel Thompson's fight, yeah, which yeah, he was yeah. like local. I actually want to watch. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be on YouTube. I want to awesome. see that. Yeah, no, it is, and he's awesome, and yeah. Mich- just Mich- that Mich- presence. Do you, do you, I mean, you know where he stole the, you know how he said like the last name and then the last name again. That was like the original UFC announcer, Rich yeah. the G-Man Goins, mm-hmm. would always be like Randy Couture. Cuts off. I did not know that. <laughs> Rich the G-Man Goins. Look him That's, up. I, I will have to. Yeah. He looks younger now in 2018 than he did then. That that, that legend good. show that we did, Kennedy was probably the best part of it. Him and Garrett Bischoff. Yeah. <laughs> the whole rest of that show. It was not the best. The, the legends were just, yeah. 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 <laughs> they were there. I, I just remember every legend wanting to go back to the hotel between the autograph signing and the show, except for Virgil. And he, yeah. as soon as everyone walked to Virgil, he goes, can I set my stuff back up and sell stuff? I'm like, there's sure, nobody man. fucking here. Yeah, sure. of course. <laughs> yes. Why not, man? Have at it. <laughs> you love Virgil. I. He was at my stag party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, should, we should probably tell that story. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And he say Vincent much. was at my. He, he did try to sell eight by tens. He came in a whole stack of them. Yeah. So, but, and but like, it was a surprise. Like the it was. Boys, a, the boys I had no idea. You with Virgil. He they took, <laughs> took the bus in. <laughs> they did say though. They they tried to get me like a WCW Saturday Night guy. Oh really? And they were just incredibly fucking hard to find. Really? Like Booker's is like even Bill Barron didn't have it. Like, <laughs> like they try to get me like the gambler, ice train, or hard work, or you know, <laughs> well, man. Yeah. Is he a job? I don't know. Yeah, like, they, like, so they were looking around, like prostitution or something like that. <laughs> is that wait, hard work, Bobby Walker, or is yeah. no, 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 no? It's no, I know who it is. Who is it? Hard body Harris. Hard yeah, because they talked about that on Jericho's yeah. podcast. And he, yeah. here's another like, I mean, granted, the guy's like a terrible human being now, but here's another thing where WCW like kind of like dropped the ball. So hard body Harrison's like this jobber guy, and WCW Saturday yeah. night. At the same time, he's fucking winning tough man on FX. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's legitimately knocking football players yeah, out. Really? And yeah. WCW made no yeah, mention. Just, uh, Not a yeah. single bet. Ba- you know, no, go out there, man, and put over Chase Tatum. Like, that's yeah. just- <laughs> if, it was, if it was Jericho's podcast, they were telling stories, and they said he was just a weird guy. His gallows, like, knew him from being from Georgia and stuff. Oh, yeah. that's what it yeah. was. Yeah. The yeah, I listened yeah. to that because I will look up my favorite Terrible wrestle the yeah. other from that. And I looked up Hard Body Harrison. That's like the first video. Yeah. yeah. Big prostitution ring. <laughs> big, but big he problem. was the one that would did the one full pant leg and then yeah. the one short and the, short. And the one short short, which I love. When Zack Ryder did, I loved it yeah. too. Really? Like, <laughs> and when Zack Ryder did, I go, Hard Body fucking Harrison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy gets it. Okay. I like the fact that he like stole that from him. You know what I mean? Like it was like not like a big name. He got it from I him. guarantee I, Zach Ryder's the type of guy I, gar- I guarantee yeah. Zach Ryder loves WCW Saturday yeah, Night yeah. and he stole from him like Drew Cockins has that ga- gear now yeah, and yeah, yeah. Drew Cockins has no idea who Harbody Harrison is I was just like <laughs> yeah. I was like Harbody Harrison he goes yeah. what <laughs> well you know so wait we got so Virgil takes the bus in for your yes. bachelor party from where um, Pittsburgh yeah, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't yeah, far. Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah, and now and you didn't you didn't get wasted, right? No, he didn't drink at all. Yeah, like e- even like you know some of the guys said to me, they're like, "Hey, listen, like, you know, he, he can he just eat the food?" I'm like, "Yeah, I don't care." Yeah. Like, he's like, <laughs> I mean, I guess he could have the pizza because like the pizza wasn't part like the bar like was supplying the drinks, but I bought the pizza. So uh-huh. I was like, "Yeah, oh, sure, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. he can have the pizza and stuff like that." I thought and, I heard like he got like pretty quiet like towards the end of the night. It really wasn't that he was outlandish. weird. Well, he was he was outlandish at a time. He was telling how, like, what the strippers were doing is nothing and what, like, the Alton Warrior okay. liked to get done to him by strippers. Gotcha. And, and, you know, yeah. and he was bragging to Mollen about how much him and Andre the Gi- uh, Giant would, like, go as a tab at the bar. And, yeah. and like, Virgil's notorious as Chiefs. So you know Andre was flipping that bill every single time. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the, the, the story was, like, he, he's like, I ain't giving these. Like, the strippers constantly tried to, like, they didn't know who the hell he was. Yeah. yeah. So they thought he was just my friend at a stag party. Yeah. So they would constantly go up to him. He, he, was, he was pushing the strippers. Away, yeah, like, yeah I, I can it. tell. Like, the guy, I even had to talk to like the security guy. He's like, he, he was like, in hot. I'm like, don't worry, this guy's harmless. Yeah, he, he's yeah. just like, yeah. you know, me, nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, you yeah. know, but and then there was a point where he threw $20 on me, but I know that could have not been out of his pocket. Like, he probably did the Someone whole, he probably did the whole, gave it to him. you know, sneaker gimmick. He just took some 20 that was already thrown on the ground yeah. and <laughs> threw it back out. Yeah. Like, yeah, there you go, man. Happy stag. Real cardi move. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. real cardi move. Yeah. He, well, he he his famous thing was, hey, do you want an eight by ten? Sure, oh, he'd yeah. sign it, and before he handed it to you, be like the twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah, like that was like his big thing. Like people think, oh, I'm gonna get a free autograph. Yeah, yeah. he's like, hey, what's your name? And then just write it down. Like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Like, 
but yeah, it was, he was, and I got really excited. Like, I don't usually like mark out, but I was yeah. like, here I am, my stag yeah, party. Like I'm always like thing. six drinks in, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. fucking was, Vincent is, is, that, is that fucking awesome. That, that was like, like getting married is like a life milestone, right? So yep. like Virgil is part of your life milestone. And and my wife, like for our first Christmas, she got me the new figure that they have that comes with the convention sign. That's awesome. The fact that WWE put that out is really yeah, oh yeah it comes I didn't know that yeah, but instead of like wrestling superstar Virgil it says WWE superstar Virgil yeah but yeah it comes with the convention sign really like, from that infamous so photo cool. holy fuck Virgil I didn't know with that Virgil with convention sign yep. making fun of him yeah <laughs> yes. dude's just been a lifelong rib <laughs> I didn't know that well they do that they have the upside down Shockmaster mm-hmm. figure which is great too. <laughs> yeah that's a good point that's very they true. need ding dongs they need the ding dongs yeah. I would buy the ding dongs <laughs> in a heartbeat I forgot about the um, ding dongs <laughs> I yeah, just, we are like we had like the first only the only time I ever met Virgil was like Joey Janela's spring break, and like comes up to me the first time. Did he work it? Yeah. And he okay, starts, I can see Janela booking himself. He starts telling me about how I need to make money in the business, and his way of making money in the business is you need to sell out Madison Square Garden. <laughs> no problem. And he's talking to me, and I'm just like, sure, dude, because he's done that. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no idea. And then like. We wrestle, we do some stuff, and then blah, 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 we come back. And then at the end of the night, he's just crushing me, dude. Like, punishing me to the point where, like... And it was, like, one of those things where, like, the the conversation in the room lulled right as I said it. And I was like, can you leave me alone, man? Please. (laughs) And everybody was like... Like, looked at me like, whoa. And it was like... Andy just told fucking Rachel to go fucking (laughs) kick kick a can. (laughs) First time I ever met him and was that legend show and like afterwards me and me and Asylum were stopping at the hotel and we just see Virgil walking around. I'm like, we should probably fucking take Virgil to the bar. Like we are to meet W you got and a few other people are like, Yeah, like, yeah, we should fucking take Virgil to the bar. So like me and Asylum are like, Hey man, you wanna go to the bar? He goes, No nah, man, I have my share of pussy. And like so we were like, Hey, let's go to a fucking brothel. Yeah. We're just like, hey, let's go to the bar and have a couple of drinks. He's like, exactly. No, nah, I'm gonna have my share of pussy in the eighties and this is where he brings up the warrior again. The only person to get more pussy to me was the alternate warrior. Warrior. But then he looks at Asylum, looks at me, he goes, yeah, he goes to Simon, he goes, you were good in the ring, and he goes, you were good in knowledge, he goes, you guys ever think about calling up Vince? Like, it's that fucking like, easy, like, yeah, it's like, like, hey, Vince McMahon, I'm an indie worker, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, cross your mind, just having to get your number, <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm just like, this guy is that fucking delusional, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. he can't call Vince right now, exactly. like, yeah, yeah. even just a secretary, secretary, yeah. like, things have changed, man, <laughs> yeah. it's like Vince Virgil's calling again, what the fuck, <laughs> it's, a, it's a different world we're living in, hell. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't just fucking call, it. <laughs> Yo, I honestly think that this is the only podcast we've talked about every thing other than fitness or diet oh because yeah. that, they're not gonna get yeah. that with me like <laughs> hey yeah. we talked about supplements no, we did, yeah, yes we, got a lot of oh, yeah, we did yes yeah fuck yes we, we talked about a muscle yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. talked about a certain. We, talk, we talked about working a muscle. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just have my. Moments. I'll have my moments where I eat better, so I lose a few pounds. Yeah. Talked about movies. Talked about yeah. wrestling. Talked Gull's about music. Got a, uh, abs on his dick. His dick has abs. <laughs> yeah. That's got cardio, a, man. He's got a ripped up dick. <laughs> it. It's cardio. He's got a ripped up dick. Yeah. Ribbed for yeah. Her pleasure. His dick looks like the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> But it has like a night hard goatee on it. It's, a, it's, a, it's not that. It's like Jeff Gaylord. It's not that impressive. Yeah, it's, it's like almost all awesome the night stuff. <laughs> it's a night <nice> soccer. <laughs> uh, wait, was the night night soccer was Jeff Gaylord, right? Uh, was it? Or was it Adam Bomb? No, it was Adam Bomb. It was, right? Yeah, it was Adam Bomb. Adam Bomb was the Night Stalker, yeah. Was that before yeah. Adam Bomb? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was before Adam Bomb. Je- oh. Jeff Gaylord was like just one of those guys, like Chris Walker, Conan and Chris Walker, that yeah, they yeah, yeah. thought was going to be the next fucking big thing just because yeah. they were like roided out and just never. I'm going to say this, though, like going back to Wildcat Chris Harris. Uh huh. Awesome. I, w- Wildcat Chris Harris, dude. Totally underrated. America's like, most wanted, like, was they're huge. amazing, dude. Yeah. They were fucking great. Mm-hmm. You know who else I loved during that time period was the Naturals. They were great. I loved Andy Douglas and Chase Stevens. I'm yeah. like, how do these fucking guys never? They fe- I think they feuded, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah. feuded with AMW for a while, and then like, and like, just Chase Stevens just happened to always be there when he first there. He was doing the hot shots with. Um, what is his name? Uh, he actually had an E run too. C- Cassie Riley, but he, he was like, oh really? Yeah, yeah Casey. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, but uh, I the hot like actually that TNA era like they would show it on Empire Sports. Yeah, it was like two thousand like two to like two thousand four. It was like the first syndication. It was their explosion? Okay, and if you watch those explosions, the amount of stars. 
that are Unreal. that are in those matches. Like Hero is like yeah. a jobber, oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah. got MVP and Carl uh, and, and Mr. Anderson yeah. and freaking oh, it's it's impressive. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, th- TNA like early TNA like right now. Like if you get the Fight Network. Just to put over fucking Smash Wrestling one more time. If you get the Fight Network for uh-huh. uh, six ninety nine a month, <laughs> yeah. um, you get every fucking TNA pay per view. That's pretty it's sweet. Just on there, like that's, that's crazy. And it's those and weekly goes, ones too. Yeah, and it just every it's it's crazy because like they have like twenty categories for like TNA, so you can watch like the best of the knockouts. You can watch like the best matches of Austin Aries, the best matches of AJ Styles, the best matches they're right. all, all the on DVD, there. All the DVDs they all the DVDs came out are with. on the Fight Network. That's bad. And like you go back and then they're in like chronological order. So like you can go all the way back to like two thousand and three and watch like every program that they did in two thousand three. It's did, insane. Did you ever hear the story about like their first show? No. How they it, they had like a dark match for the crowd and they used this like local guy named Cheeks. And Very he was cool. like 500 pounds, and he was basically like a you know an African American Rikishi, like that was his gimmick. Yeah, yeah. And he broke the fucking ring, <laughs> like he broke like the oh. ropes. And now they're about to go on pay per view, and they're literally scrambling oh to fix God. the ring. Sounds... And the first ever TNA show in Alabama it was like in Alabama, like me the and, first one. Me and Laura did. Me and Laura did a thing for the Fight Network, and they had us watch old TNA matches. Probably like, was Cheeks. And I think because one was like a big dude, and I think it was Cheeks. Yeah, he, yeah. The one was like the Shane twins, and they did a yeah, tag. They match. were Rod and Todd the Johnsons. They were yeah, they were the Johnsons. They were Dick Gimmick. Yeah, they, yeah. They were Dick Gimmick. Yeah, and then the other one was uh, the big heavy. It was yep. Cheeks. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was the match where he broke the ring, but no, but yeah, the like that they had he, a in the dark match, that, he basically but, broke the ring right before the first ever show. It's crazy. <laughs> well, Stiff Knights would be a great tag team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like Stiff Steve and Nick Knight. Oliver, <laughs> Oliver Street might need to change their gimmick to the Stiff Knights. Stiff Knights. Stiff, 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 stiff Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Danny go see over tag. It's gonna be stiff nights. <laughs> I, I love it. I fucking love it. I'm into yeah. it. I'm pretty into it. A oh, forty year old man and a twenty year old man. <laughs> 20 years difference. Taking over the night. <laughs> I, just, I would love the vignettes on that. Like, you just taking Danny to, like, what 40-year-old men do and everything yeah. like that. Danny's yeah. like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> this is not cool. He's, like, on his phone, you, like, slap it out of his fucking head. Like, listen, it's like you fucking do a Roth IRA. Now fucking little yeah. red. <laughs> He's on his phone, I'm asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Danny's like, yo, let's go hang out. <laughs> you're just tired all the yeah. time. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck's a newspaper? Like, you're like, you your foot hurting. Stiff knife. <laughs> I'm gonna get up. Pick me up. Pick me up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, should we wrap it up? I do gotta say something pretty bad though. What? So Danny hit me up just to bring movies into this. Yeah. We did talk about buried movies for a second. Yeah, we got a little bit. We did, yeah. Um, remember that buried alive shirt with the Cape Fear eyes on it? You remember that shirt? No. Sick. I remember the Cape Fear eyes. Buried alive. Um, like the eyes in the background, yeah. and then what was the rest of it? It just said "Watch you, uh, watch you die." Oh, okay. I'm getting a shirt made right now. It says "The Red Death." Yeah. In that logo, Danny's yeah. eyes. Yeah. In red, and then it just says Daniel Garcia. That's great. Yeah. The it's red. Be hard. The Red Death. That's the name we came up with for Danny Garcia. I actually saw the one of the guys put up the design. They just recently made that. I think I saw that. That was the one. Red Death. Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Yeah. It's like supposed to get in the works. Yeah. Yeah. It's sorry. Sweet. Yeah. It's it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty fucking sweet. Fuck man. He, he just came out with a cool Death Row shirt. I, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. He said he doesn't want that. Fuck man. But like coolest tag ne- name ever. North America's most wanted. Him and Terry. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's fucking awesome. Uh huh. Brothers and brothers are doing all right. Well. Uh, Trap it up. You got any last words? Uh, I don't know. Just... You want to put over that scrubbing bubble, bubble thing just for a second? All right. What okay. Fuck, so, fuck scrubbing bubbles. So, what I, one of my favorite things to do when I was in college was I, I would debate cartoon characters versus cartoon characters and, <laughs> and like logo characters and all this. And I had this thing that the scrubbing bubbles win it, would win every fucking fight. Like, if it's the scrubbing bubbles versus the no aid or scrubbing bubbles versus Mr. Clean or uh-huh. whatever, because they're fucking, they multiply. Like, if they continue to <laughs> sud and soap and sud, they can drown you with their powers. It doesn't matter how fucking powerful you are. Like, how are you going to kill soap? Unless you wash it out with water. But if there's not a drain, you're fucked. If there's no drain, the scrubbing bubbles are, unless you're fighting them in a bathtub. No, I see. Yeah. 
You're fucked. There's yeah. not a single like Tony the Tiger get his ass kicked. <laughs> Count Chocula get his ass kicked. Fucking the singing raisins from California get their fucking asses kicked. <laughs> Nobody would beat the scrubbing bubbles unless they were actually in a bathtub that they could put them down the drain. Did you, you guys talked about this before? Oh, I have I have had debates on this recently this weekend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this this weekend when you were like, "Come on, guys, we're having a meeting in this room," and then like. 40 minutes later <laughs> We had the meeting Yeah, yeah. Mullen calls me out About fucking Mongo McMichael <laughs> I hate him That was a good way To get the meeting started. I just love that you hate The Pepe Like that's my favorite Thing about yeah. it I hate him <laughs> That's the Buried Alive One shirt. of the only dogs Buried Danny Al- Garcia Yeah That's gonna right. be awesome that's Um but uh, yeah, but yeah, so yeah, so, so yeah, no, I, I like well, what I used to do was I used to like you know the NCAA tournament. I used to attach the sixty four basketball teams, no sixty four ridiculous characters, and whoever won that basketball game, that character advanced. <laughs> and I would do this every week on my radio show in every college. Week. In college, and like it'd be like Jolly Green Giant wins the fucking thing, you know, uh, <laughs> you know Hamburger Helper Mitt wins the fucking thing, like you know. And, so, I like that you like went like. Not even cartoon characters. Yeah, like, just any like kind of character. Yeah, 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 exactly. For green beans, like no matter what the fuck yeah. it was. No, it was just a matter, like, like not like I don't know what was that. What was like the Hanna Barbera shark? Oh, oh Jawbreaker. Ah, Jawbreaker. shit. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jawbreaker was cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty cool. But like you know, what I mean, like not those guys. No, it was just like advertising. Because people have had those debates, but let's talk about what really matters: Count yeah. Chogg and the versus Captain. <laughs> the <Yeah. Noid. laughs> like the Noid, you know. Yeah. Who was the Noid? You don't remember the knows. Noid? Oh yeah, the yeah. little fucking red fucker, the red guy. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had an action figure of him. <laughs> See, yeah, the Noid was over. He was over. Actually, I remember I got him in my stocking on Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. It was. I was real excited. If about you're it. listening to this, who could beat the Scrubbing Bubbles? Besides the Noid. Unless it was, unless you had a drain, no one's fucking beating them. Yeah. They're just going to keep multiplying. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're not fighting one fucking thing. You're fighting millions. You're fighting an army. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you, you got no choice. <laughs> you got no choice. But uh, I guess just like uh, follow me on Twitter. Maybe one day I'll have a thousand followers. I'm in the 800. So. You're getting there. Yeah, Twitter at Chris Gallo. So uh, I'm on Instagram, but the last picture of me was drinking on a beach in 2014 with a red apple ale. <laughs> so, so it's been a while. I think it was like 2013. Actually, I'm you actually got the Twitter handle at Chris Gullo? Yes, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I, awesome. I got lucky. Good Good well, because I joined, but see, like, I got like 800 followers, and that's cool. I joined Twitter like 10 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah. You're putting the work in. Yeah, yeah so. You're going to get there. Gonna, yeah, yeah, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and find me on Facebook. I'm easy to access. I have a yeah. comedy page and a regular page, Chris Gullo, so. Like the goofy looking dude with glasses is easy to find. I typed in notable stand up comedians from Buffalo uh-huh. and you were like, He was on there? Yeah, Fuck, because some yeah. DJ from like, I don't know, some radio station around here, like, had to probably write like an article at like four in the morning and he just yeah. looked up comedians in Buffalo <laughs> and it's obscure because like I'm on there and the guys have done comedy in 40 years are on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got oh, heat for that. I'm like, oh, I'm a tough fight comedian in Buffalo. What the hell? Of course. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, whatever, guys. Oh, I'm going to use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here I am. I'm notable. Yeah. Hey, I won an Art Voice Award one time. <laughs> yeah. hey guys, I was an Art Voice. Hey, yeah. I mean, we're in North Tonawanda right now, right? Yes. I would say I'm pretty... When it comes to celebrity status, I would say that from North Tonawanda, I'm, I'm a pretty big name from North Tonawanda. I'm not on the notable person list on Wikipedia. He's real hot about it. No, I, I, you know, yeah, who, that, you know that who is be... like gets him really upset. Jamin Olavincia. He's <laughs> <laughs> down there, not me. That, that is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Jamin's great, but that's Kevin, bullshit. Kevin Bennett right agrees. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Bennett isn't on there. I want to fucking be a Kenmore. What the fuck? You got to write I it. think Kenmore's got Wolf Blitzer, and that's it. Really? Yes. I don't want to tell my Wolf Blitzer story. I told my Wolf Blitzer, Wolf Blitzer story on here before. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. We'll he, talk off he invited. He invited us to CNN. Oh, because you're from Buffalo? I just I just want to be on the cover of the fucking Gusto. Will, Will Carizian and yeah, Puma, Puma have both been on the cover of the Gusto. Yeah. Give me on the cover of the Gusto. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, there was a bunch of comics around Gusto, too. I did not, get, I did not make yeah, the Gusto the cut. Fuck, man. <laughs> no, no, no Gusto cuts. That's bullshit. All right, well. We'll get there, guys. Yeah. Maybe we, maybe we don't say heat is in the ring, because all three of us aren't fucking... I'm not notable in the city that I love the most. <laughs> You've never been on the gusto. We've got we've got no you heat. I've never been on the gu- in the gusto either. No, it's bullshit. Like I've been the gusto for like, hey, the here's the event list. This guy's but playing. but to put to put ourselves over a little bit, uh, on Sunday, uh, the well oiled machines went a, a big grueling tag team 
ladder match for the first ever Smash Tag Team titles. I saw it. It was yeah, pretty cool. I got, yeah, I got, I got a little carried away, and I grabbed the microphone afterwards. Very first thing that happens, I grab the microphone. Everybody calms down, realizes I'm going to talk. Some guy in the crowd just goes, Heat to the ring, brother. <laughs> That's fucking yeah. sweet. Yeah. Fucking sweet. It was awesome. Yeah. It was first very first cool. thing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. See, at least that works for you. you know? I'm glad I was there. I didn't win a title. I didn't even wrestle, <laughs> the only thing I did this weekend is I won a wrestling match, and then I jumped off the second and hurt my knee. <laughs> he got, I jammed my. He got so excited. Yeah, we did realize that we both have an affection for a uh, a late mid to late two thousands uh, rapper from Buffalo, New York. Oh yeah, Doughboy yes, yes, okay. I don't know. We, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doughboy Church Chokes. has got a lot of heat right now, especially in, on the, especially towards so Kevin on the night. Oh, on the night before, on the night before uh, my wedding, but me and my best friend we used to love watching terrible rap videos and stuff. We'd watch like Doughboy Shows and get like you pumped up. So, fun, oh yeah. yeah. So the Straight night before up. the night before my wedding, we were pumping out the Doughboy Shows in 2017. This, this, is, the, this, what, this no is the this is the best run-in we've ever had we trying to wrap up a podcast. When he was supposed to be doing a best man speech, you could ask Kevin my best man he was talking about hookers and stuff like because yeah. he, he, he did not script it like, like yeah he just went off the cuff because we yeah. did nothing but drink and watch Doughboy Chojo videos the day oh before it's fucking awesome so we just took a trip to Richmond to get our stuff made by that Kim Dilla chick and uh, so we drove all the way to Richmond to like get size about eight hours get some stuff figured out Puff got like his gear like fixed and I had like drawstrings put in my like trunks, which they that didn't cool. have before. Like my hog would have fell out. There's no <laughs> hog there; it's a little piggy. But um, yeah, and like the whole time we were there, we were talking about Doughboy Choch. We were talking about then. Did we start searching like that? Doughboy Choch is part of this crew. He's part of the Purple City Players or something, right? Purple City. It was also affiliated with uh, <laughs> Shice Bob's Hell Row. He, he used to do Puff these rap saying, videos. Puff kept saying Shice Bob. <laughs> rap videos in like his barber shop so hard man you gotta you gotta have George you gotta do to the crew name numbers yep. you gotta have George Gadden sing so hard from Joe yeah, like, well there was this guy named Supernova who produced all these like music videos for these rappers in yeah. like the mid to late 2000s and like yeah he Doughboy's I mean Doughboy I mean he's, he's in jail right now so, uh, <laughs> he's in jail so I mean he never did me wrong but I guess I can't say he's a nice guy so yeah. Yeah. but but uh, it was just, it was that he, 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 Son of a bitch. <laughs> he claimed he invented the taper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the, the blowout the blow ta- taper. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. I didn't the, know it was the, called the, cut life. Well, the first, the first like hip hop label was Cut Life. Named yeah, after yeah. his barbershop, The Cut. Oh, okay. Yeah. So are you cut life or not? Well, well but, there was like some, wait, sorry, go ahead. We're, we're in Kim's office. Kim made like Bray Wyatt's gear, like a whole bunch of, like the new uh, Luke Harper gear. So we're in her office for a while because she's working on her stuff, measuring us up. And like, you know, after a while, like that's when him and Puff just start looking up Doughboy Shoch videos. And like, <laughs> and literally like, I saw after a while, she's just like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? And then like, they're like showing her like Doughboy Shoch videos, Bob. like Shoch Bob showing her, showing her fucking internet clips. It was awesome. <laughs> Shice Bob is like the master of the piff. You know, he smokes a lot of piff. He was selling piff. He went to jail. <laughs> what are, what are and you? now he's building the empire back. <laughs> What are you working on over there, Gullo? No, uh, I didn't realize it's fucking 11.30. Oh, yeah. Like, my wife's like, hey, where the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> thought you were going to do a 20-minute podcast. Yeah. Whatever. It's not a big deal. I, I just texted her now, but I just was right, like, missed calls. We should wrap it up. And everything. The Doughboy yes. show. But we have to pretty... definitely talk more Doughboy Please. eventually. Okay, so Gullo's coming back for the Tuggy Awards. Uh, Tuggy when, Awards. I guess I guess I am. Come, 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 Tuggy Awards. Coming back for the night. Can we get Sarah Joy happened. Brown I almost, for the Tuggies, please? Yeah. I, I, I almost feel like we got to have Hacker back for him. Oh, 100%. Like, I always liked Hacker, but after doing the Tid the Season show, and you're like, yeah. the, you're like the fourth person that's And talking to him about his, like, he will fucking put over the pocket he pussy. He don't give a shit. Yeah. And I love a man that will put over, like, I'll put over Stiff Nights and yeah. put over the pocket pussy. Yeah. I, that's, that's actually a really good like, combo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Take a Stiff Nights and just pound that thing. <laughs> just <laughs> pound out a flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need. Um, that's it. Yeah, I think we should have Hacker on, and I think we should have Greg Bain. Like, actually do, like, one, if there was a way... <clears throat> wow, bow in my throat. <laughs> you've, been, you've been eating Skittles for the past half an hour. Skittles, and I drank almost an entire jug of this banana milk stuff. It was fantastic. <laughs> Chocolate banana milk. For, you get a it's about the most sugar I've put down in a long time. <laughs> yeah, Skittles. And then you just pounded Skittles after. Yeah. Well, um, I, I started with sashimi, because I'm classy. Uh-huh. 
But I'm not on the notable person's list. For it's bullshit. List. <laughs> so if someone's out there, if they're a Wikipedia editor. No, we, we get... had a guy. We, that was a thing. Like one of the dudes from Violent Gentlemen tried to, try to put me in there and they took it off. Really? I mean, I'm, I'm nobody, but if somebody wants to put me on the Kenmore, New York one, yeah. that'll be great. Notable. Yeah, that would make me feel real good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've done some things. I'm like a Z list. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm at least H. I'm at least on the yes. H list. Yeah, you're, you're a little higher than that. You should definitely be on the notable persons of North. I just wonder if like anybody looks you up and they find like the crooner from like the fifties, and yeah. they're like, or if it's the other way around, yeah, like somebody's yeah. like, I really, I'm really in the mood for some crooner music. Maybe that's and they just look you up. Maybe and, that's why I keep getting taken off the Wikipedia things. So I have the same name as that dick, the Moon River guy. Yeah, <laughs> I did save the clipping when he died. Oh, really? Andy Williams, Andy dead. Williams dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> I should put that on the shirt. Well, then you also had the, uh, when we were across the border, there was the Andy Williams that, like, got a DWI 20 years ago, and they always oh, thought yeah. you were that guy or something. Oh, it's the worst. I literally was getting pulled over. This is awesome. This is, this is what a run-in. We've had five run-ins. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, it's never going to end. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all this right. is seriously like a 97, like, final match uh, for Nitro. Yeah. They just, it Go, just keeps coming. Going yeah, this is where they're like, fuck the new Avengers of Robin Hood. We're yeah, just yeah, going to continue yeah. going. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I kept going through the border and I kept getting pulled in and I'm just like, you know, what the fuck, right? So this lady asks me, she says, oh, you know, is there anything you don't want, you want to tell us about? And I said, no. I said, well, in 2000, my the band I play in got pulled in, but... I mean, that was like 10 years ago. We've done everything by the books ever since. You know what I mean? And like, and literally at that time, you could go, uh, yeah, we're playing a birthday party. And then they would just like let you in and like, whatever, right? So like just one time, this guy got a bug up his ass. He stopped us and just turned us around. So we got checked, right? So um, this lady fucking stops me and she's like, she goes in and she stands and like, she asked me, is there anything you want to tell me about? I said, no. So then she goes in. And then when she, like, comes out, she just stands in front of the car, points at me like a mom, and does, like, the down point. Like, get out here. So I'm just like, whoa, she's pissed. What the fuck is this about? So I get out, and she goes, there's nothing you want to tell me about? And I was like, <laughs> nope. I, I tug a lot. <laughs> I told you, yeah, I'm Sir Tug a lot. I was like, uh, I've tugged in many countries. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um... So yeah, I was just like, I, I, no, I don't, I, I don't know. What, what do you want me to tell you? you know what I mean? And she goes, "You have a DWI. Oh, you have a DWI." And I, I straight up just look at her. I was like, "I haven't drank since I was 14." <laughs> like to her face, like I have not drank since I was 14 years old. And you can't drive, and, and when you're 14. <laughs> and she's like, "So you weren't born?" And this is insane. She goes, "You weren't born in 1968." And I was like, oh, "How old do you think I am?" Yeah, the fuck, lady. And she goes. How old are you? And I was like, 37? Like, at the time, you know what I mean? And she's like, are you, are you from blah, blah, blah? I'm like, no, I'm from North Tonawanda. You have my you have my fucking paperwork. <laughs> like, did you read my passport at all? She's just, like, ready to get this yeah. Andy Williams. Like. And then she looks, and she's like, oh, you, you were born in December 12th, 1977. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. And I'm now I'm, like, mad. I'm like... Give me my stuff back. <laughs> and she goes, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, yeah. Can I go in there and, like, talk, That like, get this, like, can I get a, a, a green check mark? Like, hey, we've been fucking with this guy for three years, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I like, go in, I'm like, yo, you have me, like, flagged for some guy that was born in 1968. Look at my stuff first. <laughs> How about look at my passport? You ask for my passport. Look at it. Yeah, exactly. You know Take what I mean? Like, look at it. How about that first? And then this woman thinks I'm fucking 55 or 6 or something like the that. 55-year-old like, town drunk that yeah, drives around. here I am. Yeah, I look great. <laughs> this HGH that I'm putting in my body is... <laughs> really? It's fucking doing it, man. You know what I mean? Oh, God. And they're just like, yeah, we're really sorry. And they just took, like... Yeah, we'll just make sure that it, it never happens. Again. Like, yeah, right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Great. That's the story. Yeah. A little run in. I loved, I loved ending on that in Doughboy Church. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Purple City. So, say, say, you say it. I said it last time. Yeah. Heat's in the ring, brother. Thanks, guys. See you next week.